from the city boasting two pro hockey champions, the IHL's Vipers and Gordie Howe present a monumental night at the Palace of Auburn Hills. <laughs> Auburn Hills, welcome to season number eight for the Kansas City Blades, and what a way to start it. The Blades up against the defending Turner Cup champions, the Detroit Vipers, and of course, you all know, Gordie Howe, one shift, two shifts, whatever, Gordie Howe, Mr. Hockey, will be here at the Palace tonight. Also here, myself, Bob Kayser, along with my broadcast partner, Don Fortune, we're happy to have you with us. We are elated to have season number eight set to begin here, Donnie. Well, we really are, and here we are. What better way to start this season with against the defending champions of Detroit? Vipers, obviously the Gordie Howe thing has become primary focus, but the Blades got to be concerned about a new team, a new coach, and some new faces. Well, Gordie's going to start the game. Uh, he may take another shift or two. We'll talk more about him in a moment. They've got uh, quite the elaborate ceremonies that'll be taking place during uh, a lot of our pregame show, but uh, let's let's focus on the game, Don, and, and that's obviously what we're here for. The Blades, Vipers, uh, uh, the, uh, Kansas City returned 16 players from a year ago, and of course, three significant additions to the lineup as well. Well, they are. You know, Doug so Tart said at the end of last season there were three areas that he wanted to work on. He wanted to improve his goaltending. He wanted to strengthen himself on defense. He wanted to get one more centerman, and he thinks he did all that, starting with uh, John Casey and Nets. Uh, gosh, here's a veteran NHL goaltender. Uh, we all know the exploits that he has turned in, particularly in his years with the Minnesota North Stars. 425 games in the NHL. The last two seasons backing up Grant Fuhr in St. Louis with the Blues, and when he was in there and was quite a bit, he played quite well. You may I remember just two years ago, too, Don, against Detroit. That's uh, right. When Grant Fear got hurt, Casey stepped in, was phenomenal. I'll never forget the goal Eiserman scored from the blue line uh, in Game 7 in overtime to win it. John Casey, just a marvelous career, and obviously uh, we're thrilled to have him in a Blades uniform. Another newcomer, Ian Fraser. Here's a guy who's got a lot of experience, uh, Don. Uh, I know that uh, Doug, Doug Sotart was after him uh, very much so over the summer, finally lured him to Kansas City. He comes here not only as a great hockey player, but a leader as well. Well, he does, and he's a centerman who will play with John Purvis out there, and that's what they were looking for. One more strong center. They got Fraser, a guy who's going to wear the C this year. He will be the captain replacing Gary Emmons, of course, who retires. But he'll be out there with John Purvis, Fred Culleton. That should be an interesting line. Doug feels he's pretty solid now in the middle. Speaking of Purvis, uh, we've got a lot of the new uh, the returnees to talk about. Let's focus on Purvis, a former 56 goal scorer in this league just a couple of years ago, obviously down in the goal scoring last season. But uh, Paul McLean says, coaching John Purvis Purvis is simple. Get him the puck and tell him to shoot. He's yeah. got that great shot. He can, he's got the great shot. He can find the net, and he's, he's not getting any younger, obviously, but uh, he knows how to play this game. He's a veteran. He'll play a lot of it on instinct and on experience. He'll be in the right place at the right time, and I think with uh, Fraser playing in the middle with John Purvis on the wing, that's going to be an interesting thing to watch this season. Got to be excited about David Bruce coming back, a guy who was just on fire during the second half of the year, ended up with 45 goals, uh, of course, breaking a Blades franchise record. Let's take a peek at the Vipers just uh, for a moment here. Uh, uh, Pete Savaglia is the one guy, I guess, that stands out amongst the eight that returned from their championship team, Don. He's an original Viper in the MVP of the playoffs last year. He's a key. I talked to Rick Dugley, the general manager of the uh, Vipers, earlier today, and he says, you know, we've lost a lot of players. A lot of guys have gone elsewhere. We only got eight guys back, but we got what we think was the nucleus of the team, and the first guy he mentions is Peter Savaglia. He's the key. He's kind of the linchpin that he feels holds it all together. Hard to believe. Seven seasons behind is here we are, number eight, second straight year now as an independent franchise, and certainly Doug has done a great job surrounding himself with some awfully good hockey players, and of course let's not forget Paul McClain, the new head coach. Well, that's right, Paul McClain, uh, outstanding coach uh, with the Peoria Rivermen, uh, did a great job with some really good teams there, did a great job with teams that maybe didn't have a lot of talent, but he got more out of them, he got them to overachieve, and that's the key to being a coach, getting your team to play as a team, and maybe accomplishing more than they're capable of. What were you saying uh, when you hit 69, you're going to come and and yes. do, a, do one final broadcast with me. When I'm 69, I'm going to make a guest <laughs> appearance and do one period with you. So a couple years from now. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, uh, the one guy, 69 years old, that we'll be focusing on here in just a moment or two, Gordy Howe. He and the Detroit Vipers will take on the Blades. It's going to be quite a night, and we'll have our thoughts about Gordy Howe and, of course, all the play-by-play -play of the game coming up. Happy to have you with us. Season number eight for the Blades just around the corner. Stay with us. We're back in a moment. <laughs> In a lot of ways, 
this is a new TWA. On time, reliable, and great service. We have a new commitment. We're really hustling out there. It's going to be an on-time airline if I have anything to do about it. You've been posting better performance every month. 30 brand new state-of-the-art aircraft. Uh, becoming a younger fleet with a lot of very experienced people. We're going to take good care of you. This is our airline. We want it to be your airline. we got to earn our customers every day. We try to do that on every flight. TWA, Trans World Airlines. We want to be your airline. At 6 a.m., my coffee maker grinds its own beans. Wake up and smell the coffee, I'm there. I buy books on the internet, I fax, I email. I am at peace with technology. So, you think that since Nations Bank lets you bank just about any way you want, the big question for me would be, do I bank by phone, or do I stop by Nations Bank on the net, or do I use one of their two zillion ATMs? You know what, I, I still go to Nations Bank in person. <laughs> hey, I'm an old-fashioned guy. I wake up, it's the weekend, and I'm in the dime zone. Right away, I'm out of the city and have the beach all to myself. I get this fabulous cappuccino, iced of course. Then these people ask me to house set for the rest of the summer. Best of all, my calls are just 10 cents a minute. You took the words right out of my mouth. The entire weekend, it is so simple. When I call the most, it's just a dime. Station is a wonderful place. Best place in town. We met friends here. Lots and lots of fun. Just so courteous and everything. I just enjoy coming here. You get more than what you pay for. We want you to come here happy and leave happy. Best bartender in town. Right? I'm having a great time here. It's like home though. It's, it's our favorite, my favorite place. Everything you can want. You've got to come and see it, really. The entertainment's fantastic. I've never had that kind of luck anywhere. Congratulations. You love it. Well, welcome back to this uh, incredible night here at the Palace of Auburn Hills. Bob Kayser joined by Don Fortune and, of course, 21,000 others, uh, as well as an incredibly large host of media that are in attendance here at the Palace to watch what is uh, certainly history in the making, Gordy Howe, to play, uh, become the first pro player to play in six decades. Well, they presented him with this bronze bust before the game, which was specially commissioned uh, for this night. Uh, uh, when he came out on the ice, the place went nuts, as you might expect. It was... Uh, uh, a standing ovation of enormous proportions. Uh, while they were doing that, uh, they, they were running some video clips up on the video board of Gordie Howe. And, well, it was black and white video, obviously, from the old days when he first broke in with the Detroit Red Wings. And it was, it was interesting. It was, it was, uh, I can't explain it. I guess just to see a legendary player on the ice, obviously the first time I've ever seen Gordie Howe play in, uh, see in person and seen him come on the ice, that got to me. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, he doesn't have to take a turn on the ice tonight. I, I, I got what I wanted to see. I wanted to see him out on the ice just one more time. You don't have to play the game. Well, he's wearing that number nine, yep. Don, and, and it, it's, most people, I think, associate his entire career with the number nine, but he actually wore number 17 his first season. And his first season, by the way, with the Detroit Red Wings was in 1946. This was before Brian Stacy's parents were born. We talked about that earlier. His parents, not Brian Stacy, his parents were even born then when Gordie Howe began his 25-year career with the Detroit Red Wings. And significantly, Bob, in 1946, and all the time he played in the NHL, players did not wear helmets in the league. Today, of course, all the players do wear them. The question I have is, will he put one on tonight when he comes out on the <laughs> ice to play? He's never worn one. I think his wife, Colleen, wants to see the flowing gray locks. <laughs> <laughs> well, like most of us, when we get older, the locks are far and few between. But, but I mean, that's an interesting point. I don't know whether he'll put the helmet on or not, but, uh, but there he is. And, and I, I think, you know, like I said, he don't have to play. Just to see him on the skates at age 69, just skating around the rink here at a leisurely pace is pretty thrilling. It's, well, uh, it's, it's really quite a night. You know what's amazing, Don, and, and you talk about Cal Ripken, and, and certainly his record is second to none, and, and probably nothing will ever equal it. But when you look at the career of Gordy Howe from 1946 to 1971 with the Wings, taking into consideration that in those days the game was about as tough as it has ever been, and that he didn't wear helmets, and that Gordy Howe played the game as tough as anyone, and he hardly missed any games. He yeah. played nearly every game for 25 straight years. Well, even in his last year at age 52, 
He plays in 80 games his last year in the league when he was at Hartford. There's Jan Herme, the uh, new goaltender, one of the two new goaltenders for the Vipers. They lost uh, Jeff Reese of a year ago and Rich Perron, who led them to the Turner Cup. It's uh, Jan Herme. We'll talk more about him. John Casey in goal for Kansas City, and we're underway. They actually started this game a little bit earlier than we had anticipated. They were thinking about 7.15 Kansas City time, but uh, we've got things underway, and uh, certainly we're happy to have you all along with us. And another IHL season uh, commencing here in Detroit, and the Blades quickly with a breakaway opportunity. David Bruce, who was looking to pick up where he left off a year ago, but unfortunately they nab him for offside. Our first whistle comes 19 seconds in. Gordy Howe started this game on right wing, and that's where he's playing uh, on right wing. And on the opening faceoff, as you look at the starting lineups, uh, Bruce Purvis and Fraser is the uh, starting line, and uh, Sarawick and Norman Rochefort on defense. And there you see the starters for Detroit Walker. Howe on right wing, Shaw, Gruden, and Savalia. But the first time out, uh, he bumped in very briefly to Ian Frazier as he was coming across the blue line when Detroit took it into the Kansas City zone. And Frazier just kind of stepped aside and almost asked him if he was okay. By the way, those starting lineups brought to you by the station casino. The fun never ends at the station. Puck is dumped into the Kansas City zone. Gordy Howe wandering over towards the far boards where Norm Rose for another longtime veteran, the oldest player in the Blade Squad at 36. We'll feed the puck away back into the Detroit zone. And Gordy takes a seat on the bench. <laughs> and to an ovation. <laughs> Anything he does tonight will be an ovation. And I've got a feeling, Don, we'll see him back out there again. I can't imagine that the crowd uh, of this magnitude is going to sit still for the next two and a half to three hours without seeing him step back on the ice again. Bob, i got to be honest, though. He looked all of 69 years of age out there. <laughs> when you see these other guys, these young kids going up and down the ice, you know, David Bruce was offside on the play, but he also went by him like a streak of lightning, you know, by comparison. Gordy tried to stay with him and back check for for a couple of strides and then Bruce was gone. Boy, what an incredible night. I grew up not far from here and watched Gordy Howe play for a number of years, Don, and uh, certainly this is a personally a big thrill for me just to see him uh, you, know, you can say what you want about this the whole idea of him coming back to play but just the, the sight of Gordy Howe to me no matter where it is is a tremendous thrill. Play underway right now. Detroit with the puck into the Kansas City zone. Pass it from the right side. Shot right on. Casey makes the save. He sailed the rebound wide as the puck now steered towards the line. And the Vipers attempting to hold it in cannot. It's offside with a minute 21 gone by in the first period. Now we can maybe focus a little bit more on this game. The Blades and the Vipers kicking off the 97-98 campaign. Well, John Casey right off the bat has to make a save to get it started. Uh, Gordy Howe sitting on the bench. Uh, looks a little winded, doesn't he, Bob? A <laughs> couple of turns up and down. Boy, that chase it in the corner there once before he wore you out. But uh, Casey makes a save early in this game, and, and I think uh, he's the guy to watch. Uh, this is uh, one of the areas where Doug feels he's really strengthened the team, and uh, if, if Casey can come through with the kind of play uh, that he's capable of doing, plays are going to be tough. Vipers with a puck again, back down the right wing. Kessa lets a shot go that missed the net wide left. It goes carrying all the way back into Viper territory. Bobby Jay, a member of last year's Turner Cup team, will clear it away back onto Blades Ice, where rookie Sean Hines, who played six games with Kansas City last season, but of course, you have to play 25 before you lose that rookie status, so he officially is one of the few first-year players on this Kansas City team. Puck right now in Detroit territory. Vipers quickly on the move. Derek Armstrong just loaned to the Vipers by the Ottawa Senators gave it up. Here's Craig Well in alone. Shot score! Blades have the early 1-0 lead and what a move by Craig Well who deked uh, to the right and then off to the stick side of Hermé he went and easily slipped it in behind him under the goal paddle and Kansas City's Craig Well gives the Blades the 1-0 lead. Hermé doesn't quite know what happened here. You see uh, Craig Well comes up on the breakaway, gets around the defenseman, steals the puck, comes right down the slot fakes one way and slides it in behind the goaltender. That's as good a move as uh, you can ask a guy to make. Uh, the puck actually uh, got by the defenseman. They literally give it away here, and uh, Craig Wall was quick to grab it and uh, just took uh, deep him to the right and then slid it in behind the uh, sprawling goaltender who had committed uh, and went down. It's a case of, uh, you know, get the goaltender to commit, and he did, and Craig Well gets us a 1-0 lead at 2 4 Poor Tim Murray, the rookie defenseman <laughs> for the Vipers, did not look too solid on that play, Don, as that puck just kind of dribbled between yeah, his legs. Exactly. Craig Well took advantage. 
Good start for the Blades. Up one zip, and they've got the puck again. Dino and takes the pass from Craigwell and launches it into the Detroit zone. We're back to play. It is Radom Bajonic. Now Bajonic will feed it up the right wing, whereas Scott Thomas, who played with Cincinnati at the IHL a year ago, big goal scorer. He'll fire it in. Out Casey to handle the puck. Ahead to Stacy now. On to Brent Culleton on the left wing, who's wearing the number 10 this season instead of 23. Puck cleared into the Detroit zone. Vipers quick to bounce on it and wheel it around the far boards right back into Blades territory. And Stacy will control. Had it stripped away. Look out right in front. Vipers with a puck and they score. As the Blades toss it up. And Detroit takes advantage of a Kansas City mistake. So a pair of giveaways done and uh, results in a pair of goals. Boy, that's too bad. You know, the Blades had uh, got a took advantage of a break here as, uh, when uh, Craig Wells stole that loose puck and then the Blades just come right back and give it away. Take a look. You watch the action and uh, boy, just a complete steal and out in front all alone. Casey doesn't have much help here. Casey drives it home and uh, the Blades have let him tie it up. Uh, not a very good play by Brian Stacy. Now, well, Stacy tried to get back in there and make the save, as you saw him cut through the goal mouth with Casey having uh, been deep to the playing surface, and Casey able to lift it in, uh, into the empty cage, and just like that, it's a 1-1 hockey game. The score clock now has gone out on us here, Don, so we're unable to to find the time of these goals, although they are very good about handing us statistical sheets, and it comes at 2.58, so just 54 seconds after Craigwell scored the season's first goal, Dan Kessa responds for the Vipers to deadlock things. And Clayton Beddows will pick up the lone assist. We'll get a break in right now, 1-1 one, one the score, back to the Palace after this. Even though Don Graham is the bright red gold pickup trucks. We're always improving things. We've made our available Magnum V8 even more powerful. We've improved the already world-class interior. In all, we've made 130 improvements to the brand lineup since introduction, including this one. New flow-through ventilation system. New Ram quad cab. The rules have changed. and the Kansas City Wizards all season long. Major League Soccer. The stuff kicks. Kansas City Blades Hockey is brought to you by the employee-owned Hy-Vee Food Stores, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. Hy-Vee, the official food store of your Kansas City Blades. By Coors Light. Tap the Rockies with Coors Light, the official beer of the Kansas City Blades. By Sprint, one source for all the ways you communicate by Station Casino, by Farmland Foods, proud to be farmer-owned, by Nations Bank, everywhere you go, there we are, by the Lee Apparel Company, the brand that fits, by the employee owners of Transworld Airlines, we want to be your airline, and by your nearby friendly Dodge dealer. And we're back here again in Detroit. 1-1 our score. Just three and a half minutes into the first period on a night in which Gordy Howe is putting his name into the record books like he really needs to, Don. He's already there several well, times. He's in the Hockey Hall of Fame. This this record is really kind of tainted. I mean, let's be honest about well, this. I call it the glorified celebrity appearance. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, it's true he played in six decades, but you can't really say he played in the 90s, you know. Uh, but nevertheless, just to have him here was interesting. But I got to wonder if... Uh, both of these teams maybe didn't have a little bit of jitters. Stacy looked a little shaky, uh, giving the puck up in his end. Uh, and uh, likewise, uh, the, the Vipers did the same. Maybe in the early going, uh, with all that's going on, there's a, there's a lot about this game that maybe bothered the players. I don't know. Well, as the play continues on, we are... Of course, glad to welcome all of our viewers on Metro Sports, American Cable, and TCI, as well as our radio listening audience. This simulcast coming your way on KMBZ, the home of the Blades again this season. And 
and uh, down on the playing surface. First penalty of the game goes the way of the Blades. Young rookie Dan Delisle was being juked and deked, and uh, finally Eric Armstrong got behind him, got a step on him. Don and uh, Delisle forced to haul him down. Off he goes at 4.09. Well, Delisle is here because obviously we got some key people missing on defense. Uh, the Blades uh, don't have uh, Steve Jakes. He's out injured. Uh, they don't have Jim Kite. He's out injured. So, you know, you you got to come up with the, with numbers here, and that's uh, one of the reasons why the youngster Delisle is in the lineup right now. But he'll see some action this year, but he's obviously uh, wouldn't be out there tonight under normal circumstances. Well, including Delisle, the Blades right now with nine defensemen, but they're minus three veterans, as Don mentioned. Jakes, Kite, Hall, and Herter all out right now. Look out. Play dangerous out in front of the Blades net. Scrambling around. Finally, the puck deflects out of play into the seats down below us, way down below us, by the way, our broadcast location. And I can't imagine, Don, you've been in a press box any higher than this one. No, we're six stories up. We are literally, uh, you, push the, you push six on the elevator. We're six floors above the playing surface. <laughs> but it's still a fabulous building. Yes, yeah, this is a great arena. Let's take a look at that last action out in front of the Blades net where the Blades poking away at the puck. Finally, it deflected over the glass. We'll get the faceoff outside the Kansas City line where Dale Craigwell is out in the penalty killing role with David Bruce, Norm Rochefort, and Claudio Scrim. And our first look at the specialty teams for the Blades, which we all anticipate, Don, considering the track record of Paul McLean, will be improved over a year ago. Now Savaglia right out in front of one-timer and a pretty save as Casey showing some excellent uh, quickness and lateral move as he came cutting across to stop Savaglia to keep this game tied at one. Of course, uh, Paul McLean, three years head coach in Peoria. And uh, each and every year, power plays and penalty killing units were effective for that Riverman club under the guidance of the Antigonish Nova Scotia native, Paul McLean. Now the Vipers stepping back and across the Kansas City line. Savaglia with a pass. It's broken up along the right wing boards, and Rosefoy will dump it back on to Viper Ice. As retrieving it there, Adam Bachanek. He'll stand in behind his own net and lead the Viper power play attack the other way with 44 seconds still to run. 14.32 to go first period. We're tied at one. The season opener for the Blades and Detroit Vipers here at the Palace of Auburn Hills. Now Bachanek, a shot blocked, deflecting right in front. Another shot, and Casey appeared to get the goal paddle on that and steer it away. And the Blades will pick up the loose puck and feed it up the left wing boards and down the ice. As the new captain, Ian Fraser, will dump it in. Now Purvis took it away along the boards. A pass through the slot ends up at center ice. Here's Kessa the other way. Rink wide pass to Armstrong. Behind him, he'll go in ahead of the play himself. And it's an offside against Detroit with 13 seconds remaining in their power play. Just a few seconds left of the power play. Delisle, you know, we ought to remind everybody, uh, this is a youngster. He's a first-year pro. Uh, he came out of juniors. That's where he was last year. Uh, played in uh, Pembroke. So he, he's really a young kid. And he's getting his first taste of professional hockey and uh, early because of the injuries. But John Casey uh, comes up with a nice save on that last shot. He just got a piece of it with the stick, enough to steer it away, or the Vipers could be ahead in this game 2-1. to one. Well, eight shots already done, not even six minutes in for Detroit. Granted, not that many of them from in close, although that one was. Casey's made a couple of excellent saves. Now Detroit will set up the power play again. Bachanek at the point feeds it in deep now where it comes a pass off to the far point. Controlling it there is Tim Murray. Now Murray lets it go right on. And Casey down to hug that one in the chest and hang on to it. And the penalty is over. And we'll get a face off to the right of that Kansas City net. You know, I mentioned the goal that Eisenman scored. And you hate to think of anything negative about John Casey. And there really isn't, Don. But, of course, being a big Red Wing fan. And that series was just spectacular. In fact, if it wasn't for Casey, it would have never gone seven games. Right. But remember that shot from behind the net, uh, the camera from behind uh -oh. the goal with that shot from the blue line that just tucked under the crossbar inside the pipe to Casey's stick side. That was a great shot. It was a that was a great series, and uh, John oh. Casey made it a great series. Absolutely. You're right. That was one of the. And you know, he's been involved in so many of those. Remember in his days with the North Stars oh, and what, what he did most with the Stars. That's what he's most famous for, Absolutely. taking them to the finals. And uh, this is a guy that has got a lot of veteran experience, and certainly the Blades are going to need it tonight, as you mentioned. And nine shots on goal now for Detroit. The Blades have only one shot on goal, but it went in the net. It was uh, Craigwell's goal unassisted early in the period at 208 or 204. And Casey is just a little guy too. 5'10, 155. I'm not even sure if he's 5'10, Don. Bob, some of the best goalies ever played this game were not particularly tall guys. 
Now Detroit with the puck in their own end gave it away at center. Stacy picking it off. He coughed it up but got it right back and lifts it into the Viper zone to my left. For those of you on radio, the Blades in their road red jerseys, the familiar road reds with the familiar logo going right to left while the Vipers move left to right and a penalty is being called right now against the Detroit Vipers. So the Blades now will go to work with their first chances. Heading into the penalty box below is Trent McCleary, another newcomer for this Viper club. So we'll see what the Blades can do on the power play, see if they can get this thing back tied up again. I've been kind of keeping an eye on Gordy Howe on the bench. He has not moved from the center of the bench, uh, or the Detroit the Viper bench. He's pretty much stayed in the center. We thought we might see him on a power play. Remember, we talked about that earlier today, but he's pretty much stayed in the center. Guys have moved in and out through both doors to either side, so they didn't... Uh, they didn't push Gordy to the to the end of the bench, so to speak. They let him sit in the, in the, in the catbird seat. And I don't think he is going to be seeing anything in the way of a penalty killing situation. No, I don't think that at all. He was kidding about that with the media here, that uh, they really ought to put me out there on a penalty killing unit. All right, first look at the power play, and here's one of the keys. Jeff Sirowick, he's got the cannon for a shot. Blade set it up in front. Hines a shot blocked out in front of the goal by Savaglia. Off the shin pad it goes out to center ice, and Kansas City will have to regroup. Now Hines at center, takes a look and lifts it back in. Sirowick position at the right point. Hines at the left point. Fraser up front with Culleton and Purvis right now in this power play unit. With a minute 17 to run, Culleton's got the puck in the right wing corner. Feeds Purvis behind the Detroit net. Now Purvis will look right in front. Score! Brett Culleton on a great pass from Purvis. And how Culleton done got that open, oh. I don't know. But we're happy about it. And the Blades are back on top 2-1 at 724. Well, I'll tell you right now, the head coach of the Vipers, Steve, Litzik is not happy about it. You look, Culleton is all alone. Purvis circles in the corner. Look at Culleton. There isn't a defenseman within 10 feet of him. 10, 15 feet. He's literally all alone, and he slides it in. So the Blades, on their first power play of the year, connect and get this game tied at 2-2. That one looked pretty good, didn't it? Boy, that, it's, I've never seen anyone so wide open on a five-on-four power play as, I, I, as that particular instance, Don. Excuse me, they're ahead two to one. I said this game is tied at two two. Please, a thousand pardons. They're ahead two to one. <laughs> I, I, I was just so stunned by that. I've never seen anybody so alone. So Culloden, the second-year speed burner, gives the Blades the two-one advantage on assist from Purvis, and Ian Fraser gets his first point yeah, in the Blades uniform. And Kansas City right back into the Detroit zone on right wing. The veteran J.F. contained with a pass. It never got through. Now he breaks up a play along the far side. Has puck control in deep where Kimball sends it towards the goal mouth. That's knocked away by the netminder, Hermes. Now the puck better on the near side. And Detroit will come away with it. As lumbering up the wing, Phil Crow will launch it into the blades end. Scrimmon retrieving it now. Now Scrimmon a pass to contain the... Top two on the seniority list now for the Blades with the retirement of Gary Emmons. Kremen, of course, an original. Back for his eighth season in Kansas City. He heads to the bench. Meanwhile, the Vipers back into the Kansas City zone on the left wing. Here comes a pass to the high slot that'll be taken away by Culleton. Now on right wing with the Blades working back in. Fraser, neat drop pass to Siroic. He cuts right in with a quick shot, and that one hit... Herme up high as the puck pulled free out in front by Clayton Beddows, and he'll charge the other way. Now Beddows in across the KC line, taken neatly out of the play by Hines. The Vipers follow up the play, and they'll dump it into the far corner. Culloden chases it down there, lifts it the length of the ice. This will bring about an icing call. As back to make the touch for Detroit is player assistant coach Brad Shaw. We'll pause here, eight minutes and 50 seconds into the opening period. Blades two, Vipers one. We'll be back for more IHL hockey after we pause for these messages. In hockey, you want the best team, just as you want the best team for your grocery needs. Okay, let's go! At hy V, you save money every day. Great! hy V meats and produce are so fresh, we never get penalized for checking, although our bakers get called for icing every day. Every player on the hy V team is friendly and helpful. He is good. That's the hy V hat trick. Low prices, freshness, and friendliness. Well, I don't think there's any question. Coach Purdy was a great leader. And the thing that was great about Coach Purdy is he led all of us as assistant coaches. Coach, we got the coach. And probably we were successful because we were surrounded by a lot of good coaches. Uh, if I hadn't been there, they'd still be really good. Well, uh, we were a very knowledgeable staff, willing to work, 
uh, Dick had a way of pulling it all together. And so uh, that was a great experience. We had a lot of fun together. We genuinely liked each other. Well, even though we are in Auburn Hills, Michigan is still considered very much so the city of two pro hockey champions, Don. The Red, Red Wings, of course, looking to repeat as Stanley Cup winners. And the Vipers hoping to make it two in a row with the Turner Cup. That's an amazing thing. I don't know if that's ever happened before where one city won uh, the two top uh, trophies in professional hockey, the Stanley Cup, uh, and then the IHL Turner Cup as well. It's never happened before. Boy, they presented those rings tonight too, Don, and I still say the Blades ring of 92 is as pretty as I've seen, but they've got a pretty nice one. We'll hopefully get a chance to take a look at it a little bit later on. Now the Blades working into the Detroit zone. Here's David Bruce who's picked off a pass, fed it through the slot. That one ends up in the corner. Blades get it off to the point. Stacy, a quick shot block. Detroit trying to work their way out again they, well, they were unable to do so but the puck just lays free and finally Shaw will pounce on it and working across the line caught up to by Bruce but they got the puck Thomas fed it right in front and that deflects into the corner now Dean Sylvester rocked along the boards but right there is Scremmon to pull the puck free and feed Sylvester now up the left wing to Bruce Bruce will pull up at center ice and he'll feed the puck into the Viper zone blades will go for a change as we near the midway point of the first period with Kansas City up 2-1 Craig Wallen Culleton with the goal, sandwiched in between a Detroit lamp lighter by Dan Kassa. Now Detroit to the blades end, the centering pass broken up by Seroic, and it'll be Cerrone now to play it away to center ice. Bachonic retreating into his own end, chased by Ewan, put the puck up the boards. Blades will take it away. Here's Ewan with a centering pass, and that one goes sailing wide. Hines with it now in control to the corner to Kimball. Kimball tied up, but Ewan pulls the puck free and a feed out in front is picked off by Tim Murray, who's had a rough period to say the least. Don, he's caught that puck up uh, several times, including uh, the play in which uh, Craigwell ended up scoring at 2:04, the game's first goal. Now the Blades again, stealing the puck in the Viper end. Here's Fraser trying to hold on to that puck, and we've got the uh, halt in action, and the Vipers are going to get nailed for having too many players on the ice. They've got six of them yes, they do. wandering around <laughs> out there. So I thought it looked a little crowded <laughs> out there. Blades are going them. to uh, have another power play. Well, of course, the Blades going with a, a new slogan this year, brand new season coming up. Welcome to the Edge. Opening night will take place a week from tomorrow, Saturday, October the 11th, and for the first time ever, we'll take a look at the Grand Rapids Griffins, who did not venture into Kansas City a year ago. You'll get a chance to see the other team that Dan DeVos owns. Of course, the uh, Blades uh, owner, Dan and Pamela DeVos. Their Griffins will come into town, so certainly it'll be a big, big night. 842-1063. Uh, the number to call. In fact, you can call right now for tickets. The Blades have several uh, folks in the office, and if you would like, you can get your tickets right now as we speak uh, for next Saturday's home opener, October the 11th, against Grand Rapids. Again, 842-1063. And if you call now, order four more tickets during this broadcast, you'll receive a coupon good for 15% off new Blades merchandise. So make those people work back at the Blades office. Oh, you didn't see uh, Grand Rapids last year, but we're not going to see Detroit this year. If I check the schedule right, this is the one and only time we play them, right? That's it. Crazy scheduling, isn't it? After tonight, it's see you next year. Yeah. Now the Blades with their second power play with the puck. They threw it out in front. It's broken up. Detroit will fight off the check of Purvis as Bobby J able to muscle it down the ice. 120 remains in the minor to the Viper bench for having too many players on the surface. Now the Blades quickly back in, and now what do we have? I think the Blades may be getting nailed on. Although I don't see six players on the ice, but they've called another penalty here, it appears, and it's going against Detroit or Kansas City, and it I think it's the Vipers again, Don. They may be getting nailed for their second bench minor for having too many skaters on the ice. Wouldn't that be? I don't think I've ever seen that happen. This uh, this has not been a good night for for Steve Ludzik, this coach. Uh, he gave up a goal early, gave up a power play goal. Count there they one, are. Two, There's three, five. four, five. There they are. There you see. One, two, three. And one behind the net and one here on the far right hand side of the screen. That's five, and you can only have four when you're killing the pen when you're killing a penalty. So. Steve Ludzik has got to wonder, what's the story with this team tonight? We got a defenseman who gave up the puck. We've been called twice for too many men on the ice. Had Gordie Howe looks on and says, well, Maybe Gordie will get more ice time now. Put me in there, coach. 
<laughs> Put me in there, coach. Come on. Let me get in there. I can. I know the rules. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> so the Blades take advantage of a rarity. Two bench minor penalties for too many men on the ice in a span of 44 seconds, and hopefully they will be able to take advantage of it. As for a minute 16, they'll have a two-man advantage, five on three, out in front of the Viper net. And they battle for puck control. Detroit came away, but a weak effort by Savagli, unable to clear it, and Purvis hangs on to it. Now Pete Seroic to the high slot to David Bruce. Back to Seroic, to Bruce, to Seroic again. He'll send one in deep to Fraser. In front now for Bruce. That one glanced off his skate. Now the blades with it. Sylvester back to the point to Bruce. Right side, Seroic. Now to David Bruce on the right wing. Seroic works it in deep now to... Fraser, he lost the handle on it, picks it up again. Now and behind the net to Sylvester. Back to Fraser again to the point to Seroic. To Fraser again to Seroic. Now to David Bruce in the circle. Now to the point, Seroic to Bruce again. Seroic right back to Bruce. Come on. Now nobody's shooting it. Finally in front. Here's Purvis with a one-timer off a feed from Fraser. He and the heel of the stick on that one. Got nothing on it. Now Purvis again with a puck in the circle. The Bruce with a drive. And that one stopped out in front. And the Vipers now will slide it down the ice with 17 seconds to go on the two-man advantage. Boy, David Bruce just one time that pass from Purvis got off a whistler. And somehow, Hermes just got a piece of it. Now here's Contain fighting off the check of Bobby J. Contain lays it back to the near point to Bruce and deep again to Contain. Wanders side of the goal to the point. Seroic right in front. Craigwell missed the deflection. One penalty over. Craigwell with a puck to Seroic in a drive and that deflects wide. Rebound. Craigwell trying to roll it in front and the Vipers take it away and again clear it. With now just a half minute remaining in the second penalty as the first one has expired. And we're down to seven minutes to go in this first period with the Blades leading 2-1. Now the Blades at center just steer it in with 17 seconds remaining in the Detroit penalty. Vipers with the puck behind their goal. They'll flip it ahead towards the line. Contain knocking it down. Feeding Scrum in the one-timer and a pretty bad save by Herme. And he keeps that puck within range to smother it. And with just six seconds remaining now in the power play, the faceoff comes up in the Detroit zone. Just got a piece of it, too, with the pad as you take a look on the television side for the replay. I thought the Blades maybe tried to be a little too perfect. There's the screamer by Scrimmon, and there you see the pad. He just got a piece of it and then covered up in front and held for the whistle. I thought the Blades tried to be a, a little too perfect, Bob, when they had the two-man advantage. They, uh, they just uh, were looking for the perfect shot and instead of just taking them. When you got numbers like that, I think sometimes you're better off to just go to the net. Now, especially when you got guys like David Bruce, who yes. is, is just absolutely deadly from uh, the top of the circles in, and then Seroic, deadly from probably 100 feet, if you will. And with that shot, it is. Now the puck at center is the penalty over. Here comes Scremmen weaving right in front. Shot oh. score! Oh. How about that? The Blades failed to score on a minute 16 of a two-man advantage, and just seconds after the two minor penalties expire, Scremmen weaves in on a pretty move and slips the puck low to the ice to give the Blades a 3-1 lead, beating netminder Herme, who's had a tough first period. I tell you, not to take anything away from Scremmen, but I'm not too impressed with the defenseman on this team. He just walked through everybody and then slid the puck past Herme, who really looked bad on the shot. I mean, he was totally unaware of what's going on. This overhead shot will show you what I mean. He just never really was on that play at all. And uh, the defense for this Detroit team, Bob, is not the same team of last year, is it? Well, I'll tell you, by the way, Scremmen just walked around a 12-year NHL veteran defenseman, Frank Musil, to score that goal. Frank Musil, uh, 758 games in the National Hockey League, Don, and Scremmen, a defenseman, walked around him. So the Blades with a 3-1 lead. As the puck is wheeled down the ice by Kansas City, this will bring about an icing call. And with 6.01 to go in the first period, we will pause. The Blades a good first period to their first game. Up 3-1. We're back to Detroit right after this. When sports you eat, you have a big thirst. It's called Rocky Mountain Fever. To cool down a Rocky Mountain Fever, you need a Frost Brewed Beer. A beer that's brewed near freezing to capture the pure, cold truth about Rocky Mountain refreshment. The one beer that's frost brewed is called Coors Light. How to buy a new car.
Step one. Pick a car that fits your style. Ford Escort. Contour. Step two. Wait for the inventory closeout sale. That's when your local Ford dealer will want to clear the inventory to make room for the next shipment. Inventory closeout is the time to get the best values on Ford Escort and Contour. Like a thousand cash back on Contour or low 49 and 69 financing on the best selling Escort. Get cars that fit your style and your budget. Step three. Hurry into your local Ford dealer today for the inventory closeout sale. Going on now. Welcome back, just outside Detroit, the Palace of Auburn Hills. Don found out that Auburn Hills is a little further away from the airport Ooh, than what you had anticipated. That's about a, that's about the same distance as driving from KC to Lawrence. Well, heck, I think we spent more time in the car than we did on the flight up here. I think we did. That's a long <laughs> drive. It's a beautiful uh, a building out here, and when they first built it, there was some question that it could uh, do well this far out, but this area has uh, mushroomed in terms of growth. Uh, and it's a very affluent neighborhood besides, so to speak. And uh, so the building has prospered quite well. The Pistons make their home here in the NBA. And uh, it's, it's a nice facility. Offside called against Kansas City. Tomorrow night, the Blades will venture down to not a brand new building, but a renovated one. The former Riverfront Coliseum in Cincinnati, now known as the Crown, aptly named. Uh, they call it the Crown of the Queen City. And we'll be there tomorrow, radio only, KMBZ at 6.15 for the pregame show as the Blades will help the Cyclones in Cincinnati begin play in their new digs, moving away from the antiquated gardens in Cincinnati where there'll be an American League team playing, by the way, the Mighty Ducks of Cincinnati. That's going to be an interesting scenario there with two minor pro hockey clubs playing. Probably had two minor, he had two teams last year in San Antonio. I don't understand why those kinds of decisions are made. We had two in Phoenix. We had the uh, IHL team and an NHL team in Phoenix. Well, some places it works. Chicago and Detroit certainly are examples of that. Yeah, those are also pretty big cities and pretty and big, big hockey, hockey towns. towns yeah. right. And as the play right now underway, the puck launched down the ice by the Blades. This will bring another icing with... Well, actually, they've waved it off now, so play will continue on. Detroit with it, heading the other way. Phil Crow lifting it into the Kansas City zone. Centering pass at the side of the net. They work into the near corner now where Detroit's Armstrong comes away with it. Now he's tied up on the play, battling for control down in that corner. Jason Cerrone wrapped up by Phil Crow. And as they continue to scrim along the boards, the puck flips high up into the air, and finally Kansas City pulls it free, and they'll steer it on to Detroit ice with 4 22 to go in the first period. The Blades with goals by Craig Wow, Culleton, and Scrimmon. Offsetting one lamplighter by Dan Kessa. It's a 3-1 KC lead right now. Now Jason Cerrone, who wound up as the Blades' top plus-minus player a year ago at plus 31. What an addition he was to this Kansas City team. As we've got the Vipers now with the puck and firing it into the Kansas City zone. By the way, you'll notice that when the puck is fired in from the other side of the red line, Don, it will not be called ice, and you have to shoot it from your blue line That's right. down gotta, the ice. You've got to cross all three lines in order to be uh, called for icing. Three lines plus the goal line, and that's a brand new rule this year. Now Blades jammed the puck, forcing the issue again in front of the Detroit net, but this time Herme with the save. 3-1 Blades. Don't go away. We're back right after this. It was a woman's prerogative to change her mind. Fortunately, she was dressed for the occasion. Lee riveted flares, the new look of Lee. and the Kansas City Wizards all season long. Major League Soccer. The stuff kicks. In addition to the uh, icing change, also the blue line has been pushed out one foot farther, which means the offensive zone or the attacking zone 
is, is a little bit larger by one foot. It also means that the neutral zone is two feet shorter because they are two feet narrower because they have brought the blue line out. The idea, again, trying to create more offense. Whoa. Same true with the, uh, with the change in the icing rule, trying to eliminate more stoppages of play. So now from the goal line to the blue line in the attacking zones, you're talking 61 feet. Instead of 60 feet. That's right, 61 feet. So the neutral zone is two feet narrower. You know, I, I like the idea of trying to eliminate the stoppages on the icing, but the downside of it, as you and I talked, is that it's going to encourage teams, particularly if you've got a lead, to just dump it all night into the zone and go chase it. And it's also going to encourage teams down with slower defense sure. to dump. So, sure. it, you know, it, it's going to be interesting. I, there's some things about it I like, other things that I don't, but it certainly does speed up the game. We, we noticed that very much so during the four uh, preseason games and now you'll get a chance uh, the folks in Kansas City and throughout the International Hockey League and the various venues to uh, witness it for yourself and we'll see uh, how people react to it namely the players I you know I'm, I'm fearful of the of the downside of it because if if you get to a game like that there's nothing more boring than to watch a team in and the whole idea of the icing rule when it was first established was to eliminate that very thing of keeping a team from just dumping the puck to the other end of the ice all night now we've got a penalty coming up against Kansas City here and Jam Contain's going to be whistled off at the 1644 mark. I'd like to see the replay of this one. Kind of a what we looked, uh, what we thought was kind of a weak call. But it's Tim Peel, who is officiating tonight's game, will send Contain off for hooking. Going to call Contain for hooking. You know, when we talk about, uh, let's see if we can see it there. He gets, well, well, I don't, oh, think, there's I don't think there's a hook there. I don't think there's a hook there at all. Uh, never. Uh, getting back to Contain, you know, we talk about the new additions and trying to strengthen yourself on defense and in goal but staying healthy was a key and this guy missed a great deal of the season last year jf contain uh, contain is the kind of player that uh, he can cause trouble for teams out there he can make things happen out there and I don't think there's any question that with his return, the Blades yeah, played a lot better. He said he had a good preseason down, of course, scored three goals in a game on Utah. Only played, what, uh, 21 games last year. That's right, but, you know, when he did get back in there, you saw a definite difference in the, in the, in the play of the team. So I think having contained healthy and in good condition for the entire season could be a big plus for them. Now Detroit with the puck on the move. Power play has a minute 30 to run. They'll work it into the Kansas City zone. Seroic tying up his man. That's John Gruden. Gruden, however, works the puck into the corner. Now feeds in deep to Scott Thomas. Viper setting up in the blades end to my right. Gruden at the point will steer one off to the near side for Peter Savaglia. He captured the Bud Poyle, Poyle Trophy as playoff MVP a year ago. Now Thomas set up in front with a shot and a beauty of a save by Casey. Oh, it was a beauty. And the blades quickly uh, dump the puck away to center. Down to a minute to go in the Kansas City penalty. 2.14 remains in this first period. The Blades lead by a pair at 3-1. to one. John Casey just quietly turning in a very solid first period here, Bob, and he was tested early and often in the game. That was a beauty of a save right there. Yes, it was. Now the Vipers working in. Beto's trying to angle towards the net. Denied by Norm Rochefort, and with the puck is Ian Fraser who slides at the length of the ice. Ian Fraser again the announcement made today named the Blades captain. Now the Viper is weaving into the Kansas City zone. Dan Kessa along the boards will leave it at the point where in control is Bachonic. Now Adam Bachonic into Kessa who left it behind the KC net. KC out to play it for Scrum and a clearing attempt held in. Here's Bachonic now working in but a good play by Purvis anticipating as Bachonic was uh, laterally moving and uh, Fergus anticipated well reached in with a stick and poke checked it and the Vipers having their regroup at center they'll cut back in Kessa wheels it behind the net penalty is over look out the Vipers in control of the pike they had a man momentarily alone in front that was Kessa now he's got it behind the Kansas City net Buck poked away into the corner, now to the point. Bobby J trying to wheel it in deep. It ends up far corner. Seroic after it there. Under a minute to go in this period. Now Seroic just levels his man. And we're going to get another penalty against Kansas City here as Seroic went after, who was that, Armstrong? Armstrong. Uh, Seroic put a pretty good hit on him. And uh, Armstrong uh, clutching to the stick as Seroic tried to pull away. 
few words are exchanged. We'll take a look at this. And uh, well, there's going to be no question about this penalty, Don. No, I know it's it's a it's a good hit. You'll watch right there. Oh, that's a good elbow to the forehead, and then a nice cross check <laughs> and a move with the stick to the jaw. No arguing that one. No, Sorok did. Sorok took issue with Armstrong hitting him a little bit from behind as they went to the boards, and he retaliated. So it will cost him. So. Well, they called him for high sticking. They, they could have called him for several things, if you the truth be known. <laughs> <laughs> so the Blades with 53 seconds remaining in the period will again play short-handed here for the third time in the period. They have killed off both Detroit power plays previously. Isn't often you see uh, elbowing, cross-checking, and high sticking all on one play. And wind up with just one. And wind up with just one penalty. <laughs> now Shaw with the puck sends it in deep. Scramming up ended Scott Thomas, and he'll come away with the puck and feed Craigwell. And Craigwell slows it up at center. He'll just dump it in deep to the Detroit zone. 35 seconds to go in the period. And Brad Shaw will start back the other way. Now Shaw left it to John Gruden, who tees it up and rifles it in over the stick of Casey. It went. Into the right wing corner, Sabaglia on it. Now to Shaw, left point to Gruden, right in front, Sabaglia turning with a shot. He sailed it over top of the net. Now 17 seconds remain in the period. Near corner, they battle. Hines chopping the puck to the line. Shaw held it in, right in front of pass, and that one hit escape. Thomas will slide one through now. Here comes a centering pass. Thomas turning with a shot, deflected right on. Casey got a piece of it. Two seconds to go in the period, and that's going to do it as the Blades will get out of here with a 3-1 to one lead, having to kill off about three consecutive minutes of Detroit power play in the last three minutes of the period. But they are successful to this point. There'll be a minute seven of Viper man advantage to start period number two. Well, a lengthy intermission will be coming our way here. They'll be, again, honoring Gordy Howe, and we'll have all kinds of stuff coming your way as well. 3-1 Blades, we're back to Detroit right after this. <laughs> The same families who work the land are proud to own their own brand, farmland. So when you choose farmland, farmland bacon, sausage, ham, and other fine farmland food products, you know it's good, wholesome food straight from the independent family farmers who produced it. Farmland, proud to be farmer-owned. Test drive the all-new Acura CL at the only Acura store that can be called Superior. Superior Acura. Again at the Palace of Auburn Hills, Detroit, Michigan, where the Blades and the defending Turner Cup champion Vipers are meeting to kick off this 97-98 IHL season. And a good start for the Blades, Don Fortune. Yeah. 3-1. The one good, good guys on one top. a good start for the Blades. And one thing we ought to notice, you and I are in pretty good shape. Almost as good as you know, I think we're looking Gordy like Howell. Gordy Howe was on the to, bench. We had to run about <laughs> half a mile to get from where we're broadcasting this <laughs> game to this camera position, but we did pretty well. You know, I think the one thing I noticed the, right off the top, obviously, was John Casey. I mean, he just stood out. He made some terrific saves. Obviously, he's a he's going to be a big key to this team. I thought he looked uh, really good. I, I just it was just nice to see him. He looked like there. John Casey. He looked like John Casey. Just a different uniform is all. <laughs> good penalty killing for the Blades. Uh, they pounce on opportunities. Don, a couple of giveaways by the Vipers, uh, some new defensemen, some young defensemen for this defending Turner Cup championship team. They've got a new look, there's no doubt, and uh, they uh, they paid for it early on. The Blades took advantage. Well, and the Blades scored on their very first power play attempt. How about that? You know, not bad. Absolutely. Well, the specialty teams, Paul McLean, amongst his many uh, uh, attributes as far as a coach, that's one of them. Great specialty teams coach, and the Blades proving him uh, just that in that first period. 3 1 Kansas City. Stand by. We'll come back for a chat with Ian Fraser as well as a chat with uh, Paul McLean during this, our first intermission. In a lot of ways, this is a new TWA. On time, reliable, and great service. We have a new commitment. We're really hustling out there. It's going to be an on-time airline if I have anything to do about it. We've been 
hosting better performance every month. 30 brand new state-of-the-art aircraft. Uh, it's becoming a younger fleet with a lot of very experienced people. We're going to take good care of you. This is our airline. We want it to be your airline. we got to earn our customers every day. We try to do that on every flight. EWA, Trans World Airlines. We want to be your airline. <laughs> Watch Frecky the Destroyer and the Kansas City Wizards all season long. Major League Soccer. The stuff kicks. As we mentioned, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of things that are rather unique to this evening here in uh, Detroit. Of course, the uh, appearance of Gordy Howe playing in his sixth decade, and as I mentioned earlier at the outset, Don, uh, not seeing number 15 in a Blades uniform wearing that C after six years, uh, it kind of tugs at the emotional fiber, if you will, because Gary Emmons, of course, uh, for six years gave so much to the Blades. So it was a tough decision, I'm sure, and, and some big skates to fill for the incoming captain who was named today, Ian Fraser. And I have a feeling this guy will have no trouble picking up where Gary Emmons left off. Ian, first of all, welcome to Kansas City. We're happy to have you with the Blades. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you very much. Ian, Obvious, I, I'm sorry, go ahead, Don. No, I was just going to ask you, Ian, I thought I saw on the, at the very start of the game, uh, Gordy Howe may have bumped into you, or there was a little bit of a collision there, <laughs> and uh, check me if I'm wrong, but uh, you almost looked like you wanted to make sure he was okay. Yeah, I wanted to make sure. I mean, what he did for the game was great over the over the six decades, and for me to maybe accidentally bump into him and, and he might have fell or something wouldn't be a good thing, so what he did was great, and it was his day, and we just wanted to make sure it was good for him. Ian, I thought I caught at the end uh, of the, uh, the pregame ceremony as we were busy doing some other things, but it seemed like you took a face off with Gordy. Was that the case? I saw you kind of shake hands with him and that must have been a big thrill. Oh, it was a great thrill for me being uh, growing up watching Gordy Howe to have a chance to uh, sit there on this special day and, and take a face off against him it was just a thrill for me and I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. I mean, it's got to be hard to fathom a guy who played 25 consecutive years in the same city in the National Hockey League. You played in the NHL, you've been around pro hockey in the game for a long time. That's just almost unimaginable, isn't it? It, it is. It's, it's incredible that for the same, same city, the same team for so many years, but you get a guy of that caliber and, and did so much for the game. No one wants to get rid of him. Everyone else would love to have him, but no one wanted to get rid of him. That's why I think he played so long for, for such a for the city. All right, let's talk about Ian Fraser, uh, uh, the captain. First of all, Ian, your thoughts on being named captain of this team. Uh, you were a captain last year in Kentucky uh, under, of course, ex-Blade coach uh, Jim Wiley. So you're used to this role. Yeah, I'm a little bit used to it right now, but um, a big, like you guys said, big shoes to fill in. Gary Emmons was a great great team leader and a, and a great person. I've, I've talked to him a bunch of times, and I was actually shocked with the, the core of guys we got here that to be named, and, and I'm thrilled and honored. I'm going to do my best to uh, to lead the team in, in any way I can. Uh, Ian, uh, you know, you're one of the keys here. Doug was looking to find one more centerman uh, to kind of put it together, and he wanted somebody out there with experience like yourself to be playing with John Purvis. You guys could have a great season together. That could be a really good line. Well, I'm really excited about that, playing with Johnny Purvis. He's a pure scorer, and he, he, he finds himself in, in shooting lanes, and it's, it's kind of my job to get him the puck and as much as I possibly can, and that's kind of my game to give the puck up, and I think we're going to we're gonna click well and, and uh, whoever comes on the other side is going to do very well too. We're going to try and move the puck to each side and see what happens. Ian Fraser, a former Quebec Nordique, played in fact for Lucien Demblois, who was coaching there at the time. Again, uh, welcome to Kansas City and we're looking forward to, uh, to seeing what we've been hearing for a long time and that of course being uh, what a great hockey player you are. Thank you very much. All right, uh, the new captain of the Blades, Ian Fraser, joining us. Uh, after we pause, we'll come back, uh, tape the interview with the new head coach of the Kansas City Blades, Paul McLean, up next from the Palace of Auburn Hills. Here's the thing about that. Sometimes it's hard to know when it stops working for you and when you start working for it. Well, I found a way to make sure that doesn't happen. Nations Bank showed me how to take my credit cards, car loans, and using the equity in my home, combine them all into one loan with a lower interest rate. Smart, huh? I make one payment a month and it's less than I was paying before. And that definitely works for me. I wake up, it's the weekend, and I'm in the dime zone. Right away, I'm out of the city and have the beach all to myself. I get this fabulous cappuccino, iced of course. Then these people ask me to house sit for the rest of the summer. Best of all, my calls are just 10 cents a minute. You took the words right out of my mouth. The entire weekend, it is so simple. When I call the most, 
is just a dime. Kansas City Wizards all season long. Major League Soccer. The stuff kicks. How to buy a new car. Step one. Pick a car that fits your style. Ford Escort. Contour. Step two. Wait for the inventory closeout sale. That's when your local Ford dealer will want to clear the inventory to make room for the next shipment. Inventory closeout is the time to get the best values on Ford Escort and Contour. Like a thousand cash back on Contour or low 49 and 69 financing on the best selling Escort. Get cars that fit your style and your budget. Step three. Hurry into your local Ford dealer today for the inventory closeout sale. Going on now. We welcome you back to the Palace of Auburn Hills, our first intermission upon us, and certainly this is a big night, as we've been explaining uh, during the first period in the pregame show. Of course, Gordy Howe, the, the opening of uh, the season for the defending champions, but it's also a big night, obviously, for the Blades, who have a new coach, uh, Paul McClain, who, of course, brings with him that trademark, uh, trademark uh, handlebar, mu not handlebar mustache, just a big mustache. It's an unruly mustache, <laughs> I would say. It's also big, uh, of course, for you, Coach, because you come back to Detroit, you didn't play long here, but nonetheless, uh, you were a former Red Wing for, what, 10 months? Yeah, I got to play here for one year in 89-90, uh, and it was, a, it was a great experience for me. It was a, Detroit's a, a great hockey town. The Red Wing fans were treating me very well, and I, I appreciate the year I had here. Obviously, a, a great career, and I find it ironic, and we're going to get to know Paul McLean, obviously, throughout, throughout the course of this year, but uh, I find it ironic, a guy that scored so many goals, stresses defense as a coach. Well, as I look back at my career, Bob, I say... Um, I scored 40 goals three times in the National Hockey League, and I was a minus player. And I look back at it now, and I say, well, why didn't somebody make me play better defensively? And uh, I guess the reason was justified by I was scoring 30 to 40 goals a year, and the reason was justified not to make me. And I feel now that um, somebody should have made me do that. And I think that uh, I also found out I didn't win anything playing that way. And uh, when you look at all the teams that win in any sports, they play well defensively, and they do a good job in the defensive end of the field or in the rink and um, so I think we're here to win championships and we have to play good defense to win. Well, Paul McLean comes to the Blades after years an assistant with the NHL's Phoenix Coyotes but prior to that three years with the Peoria Rivermen a lot being made Paul of your 141, 81 and 22 record during that three year stint you did it with defense you did it with less than ideal talent but uh, boy I'll tell you what uh, what teams you had there. Well we no, I, I had a lot of good players. Uh, the St. Louis Blues for two years uh, gave us a lot of good young players, and we managed to sign some guys and, and get a good mix of veteran players. The third year we were independent, and we had a lot of good kids that were coachable and, and, and wanted to play hard. Uh, any team that believes in itself and, and believes in each other and plays hard for one another, the talent level doesn't always win. It's a team that plays well together and, and works hard as a group and sacrifices for one another. It's a team that wins, and that's what we want to be here in Kansas City this year. It seems like a lot of coaches, Paul, stress the, uh, the, the family atmosphere. Guys have got to be close. They've got to feel like a family. What do you do to, to take it the extra step to make sure and, and ensure that does happen? Well, I think there's a lot of little things happen along the way that you make sure you address. You, you know, you, you take care of the details and look after the little things, and the big things usually take care of themselves. And uh, you know, I, I come, I take care of my family. They're a very um, crucial part of my life, and I think it all starts there. That family is important, and you treat your players with respect, uh, and they treat you with respect. And I think that's where it all comes from: is res respecting your athletes and respecting your family. Well, you're rejoining a couple of ex-family members, uh, Doug Sotart and Lucy and Devlois, of course, you played with in uh, Winnipeg for three years. Yeah, we all had an enjoyable time in Winnipeg. We, we came, like, with the rebirth of the Jets. Uh, they had been the worst team in the league the year before, and we all came in together and saw the Jets uh, emerge into a much better team, and we all had a, had our share and part and parcel in making them better, and it's, uh, it's nice to be back with and working with people you know and respect. All right, Coach, you, you talk about your Peoria teams. You had as you say, a lot of talent. Those uh, out there that saw those teams may disagree with you. Uh, as we said, uh, you, you, you had great records with less than ideal talent is what many people consider. How about this Blades team? How does it stack up with the three, uh, the three teams you had in Peoria? Well, certainly on paper, it stacks up to you know, the, the first year I played uh, coach in Peoria. We had a pretty good, pretty talented team. And the, on paper, with experience and toughness and goaltending and experience on your blue line, uh, this team stacks up as to being a pretty good paper, possibly the best team I've had on paper at the start of the year. But the big test for this team uh, is not on paper, it's done on the ice, and it's going to be their willingness to 
uh, put aside personal ambition and personal goals in, in the place of team goals. And if we can get everyone on the same page as far as the team is concerned, uh, we're going to be a team to be reckoned with. A lot of teams build from goaltending on out. Uh, obviously, you've got a heck of a goaltender to build on, don't you? Well, I've had John Casey before, and it's very comforting as a head coach to stand behind the bench and take a look down at your net when the, you know, when things are getting tough or it's a close game and uh, you're down by two goals, and to see John Casey standing down your net, it really gives you a lot of confidence and makes you feel that uh, you know, you're never completely out of a game, and uh, that's the kind of confidence and leadership that John Casey's going to bring to our team. He's not the only part of this puzzle, he's a piece of this puzzle, but uh, it sure does give a lot of people confidence having him there. You know, we have a lot of interviews with coaches. We talk X's and O's, but uh, I found it kind of funny when Paul was in town the first week, I think it was, somebody asked you, how do you coach, uh, how do you coach a guy like John Purvis? He said, just give him the puck and tell him to shoot. Well, he, yeah, a lot of coaches can get in the way, too. And I think that uh, you know, a guy like John Purvis certainly uh, has set out this past summer to prove that uh, you know that he's a bona fide player in this league and he wants to get back to the 50 goal plateau and uh, I'm here to allow him to do that he's uh, you know he's dedicated himself he's in much better shape he's better than he was when he started the year last year uh, he's playing with a good player and Ian Frazier that can get him the puck enough times and you, know, you get him the puck enough times and let him shoot it, it's going to go in the net so John Purvis is another piece of the puzzle just like John Casey is for this team's success. Finally defensively strong with a lot of veteran uh, players Jim Kite, Norm Roseforce, Scramman, Herder, the list goes on. Uh, you've got to feel good about uh, the, the seven or eight you've assembled out in front of John Casey. Well the depth of defense is important uh, the defense position and, and we're already seeing that. Uh, we start the season tonight with three of our eight defensemen under contract not even here so uh, you know you can never have enough defensemen around and they're always going to be vital Having all eight of them healthy uh, would certainly pose a juggling problem or keeping players happy for myself, but that's a problem that I would gladly accept and, and gladly uh, walk through every day. But uh, you know, defense is important. The defense is not played by goalies, and defense is played by everybody. And the most important part of the defensive part of our game is going to be our forwards' willingness to come back and pursue pucks and, and play well defensively. Coach, welcome to Kansas City. And uh, it's not a handlebar mustache, but it is a big one. Uh, we're certainly looking forward to having it and Paul McLean around in Kansas City for a long time. Well, thanks, Bob. We're looking forward to uh, Sharon and the kids and I. We're looking forward to making a home in Kansas City and staying here for a while. And it's, you just describe it as an unruly mustache, I guess. <laughs> All right. Let's hope we've got a, not an unruly hockey game ahead of a second period action is up and coming. Stand by more Blades Hockey from the Palace right after these messages. I love the station. It's for everyone. There's so many more things to do here than any other place we've ever been. To be five different restaurants and you stuff yourself, it's delicious. Chinese food, Italian food, Mexican, barbecue, just everything, desserts. I've been to all the uh, buffets in Vegas. This is the best. I like the product and I like the price. Just spend the night here. Very friendly. And most of all, it's safe. I think it's awesome. Come to our station. You'll love it. Mr. Hunt, he's back. Well, don't let him in. He's just after my wolf pack. The wolf can't get these price chopper specials. Gold medal all-purpose flour, a five-pound bag, 69 cents. Nestle semi-sweet morsels, a 12-ounce bag, 99 cents. And assorted varieties of Hudson Deli meat sliced to your order, $3.99 a pound. The 98th Annual American Royal Barbecue Contest kicks off October 3rd and 4th at the American Royal Complex. Bring the family and enjoy the fun. 3-1, the Kansas City Blades lead the Detroit Vipers, the season opener for both of these International Hockey League clubs. Blades will go on to Cincinnati from here and play there tomorrow night while the Vipers head down to Indianapolis to help the ice get started. And, of course, the Blades will be home next Saturday against the Grand Rapids Griffins, 735 at Kemper Arena. This first up Kemper Arena, I'll tell you, the place looks awfully good, folks. And we'll talk more about that later on. Our first period summary statistically brought to you by Chili's, where they grill like no place else. And you take a look at some of the stats there, Don. Well, they outshot us 15 to 10. And John Casey uh, obviously uh, played solid in the net, which has to be a big factor. The uh, Blades, uh, one for three on the power play. They scored on their very first power play. They did an excellent job of killing off power plays, although Detroit is not finished yet with the one that they're on. There's still the minute seven seconds left. Uh, which will carry over into the second period, but so far the Blades have uh, held him scoreless on the power play, and uh, it's an interesting first period. Uh, 
Blades scored on their first power play, took advantage of the first mistake of the game when the young defenseman, uh, Tim Murray, gave up the puck. And Dale Craigwell scored unassisted at 2.04. Uh, then Brian Stacy uh, made a mistake and gave up the puck on our end just a few seconds later. And uh, Kessler scored at 2.58 uh, unassisted, and then the game was tied. But then the Blades get their power play goal. Brent Culleton with a pass from John Purvis standing all alone. There wasn't anybody within 20 feet of Culleton camped out on the doorstep and uh, just slid it past the Hermie. And then Claudio Scremmen at 13:32. What a move he made. Uh, weaved his way through the defenseman and uh, and also took Hermie to the cleaners and uh, and scored as well. I, I think though Craigwell literally undressed him if, there, if there's such a way of doing that. You know, when he scored his goal unassisted on a breakaway after uh, Murray had given up the puck and he broke in and scored. So uh, the fans here have seen uh, a good heavy dose of Gordy Howe between the periods. Uh, also, they brought out uh, all of his children and his grandchildren. They all had uh, uniforms on. They were all on skates or shirts, and they all skated out onto the ice. And all of his boys, which he's got a good-looking family, he certainly got a right to be very proud of. And uh, the fans got very emotional. And then Minnie Minoso, who is the only, uh, what, six-decade baseball player, he came out and... Uh, Gave Gordy a big hug and said a few words to the fans that congratulated him. And also, of course, did a similar thing when he got to pinch hit in a Chicago White Sox game. So, enough, been, enough of that, or, or is there more? Well, there have been a couple of tributes up on the scoreboard to him from Wayne Gretzky and oh, Brad yeah. Hill, to name a few. You know, uh, Wayne Gretzky, this was his idea. Uh, he's the one who first suggested to Gordy Howe the thought that maybe he ought to try it one more time. And uh, Gretzky's the one that really put the bug in his ear to come out and do it. I didn't get a chance to hear because it was uh, during our play-by-play, -play, Don, but I'd like to have heard what uh, Gretzky had to say. It was done in New York, oh, he... where, of course, uh, yesterday he signed a rather lucrative deal to what appears to wrap up his career now with the, the Rangers. But, uh, you know, the, the question is, who's the greatest hockey player of all time? Some say Gordie Howe, some say Bobby Orris, a lot say Wayne Gretzky. I don't know. Bottom line is, they're all great, great players and great ambassadors for the game. That's why it's a thrill, certainly, to see Gordie Howe here tonight, gimmick or not. Let's what? take a peek at some of the highlights in that first period, Don, and get a look at some of these yeah, goals that you were just describing. Murray left the puck alone and slipped through his legs. Craigwell comes in on a breakaway, uh, takes advantage of the air. Now watch this move to the right. Loop to the left, he got the goaltender to commit and slid it down uh, behind the uh, the sprawled out goaltender, Jan Hermey, and uh, the Blades led one to nothing. The goal coming at 2:09, but uh, the Blades give it right back because uh, Detroit scores at 2:58 uh, to get the game tied at 1-1. Then the power play goal. Well, we don't want to look at that goal. We don't no, want to look at that. One. <laughs> they don't want to look at that goal. Here's a pass from Purvis to Cullerton on the doorstep, and that made it to 2-1 Kansas City. And uh, one more time for the pass. Boy, nobody around. I mean, there isn't a player within 30 feet of Culleton who's all alone on the net. And Hermie wasn't sure exactly what was happening. But in any case, the Blades get a power play goal. They go up 2-1 uh, in the game and uh, at uh, 7.34. And then uh, Claudio Scremmen scored at 13:32 uh, to make it to uh, 3-1. And that's where we stand right now. Scremmen uh, just walked right in and uh, beat the goaltender on the stick side, makes a move around the defenseman, and then weaves in like so and uh, slides it right past him on the stick side. That made it 3-1. That goal coming at 13-32. It was unassisted, and that's where we are right now. 3-1 is our score. By the way, I, I did hear a little bit of Gretzky's uh, commentary. Um, I got to admit, I pulled my headset off so I could hear it. Got tired of listening to me, didn't you? No, I didn't. I wanted to hear what he was saying. <laughs> and he didn't talk about his contract, by the way. He simply congratulated Gordy Howe and said that he's still the greatest player to ever play the game as far as Wayne Gretzky is concerned. And, you know, getting to that argument, who knows? I mean, Gretzky's still putting up numbers. He's not finished yet. Uh, he, when, all is, when the books are finally written, he may have the best numbers. My favorite player has got to be Bobby Orr. Uh, he was, uh, I still think Bobby Orr, who had his career really cut short, could have played a little bit longer maybe, uh, I think was the greatest player of all time. But I'll tell you this, 
This is a kick for me to sit up here in this booth tonight with you broadcasting this game on KMBZ and on television and uh, remember that uh, it just seems like yesterday I was sitting at home as a youngster, as a kid, watching Gordie Howe play on television uh, back or friends when the televisions were still black and white. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, well, some, of the, some of the highlights they showed in the pregame ceremonies, a lot of them were black well, that's and white. That's right. And I, I really got a kick out of that uh, uh, tonight to be here, to be on the other side of that, so to speak, and uh, and be a part of uh, what we saw here tonight. Here are the new faces that we talked about, Bob. But, uh, Not that many of them, Don. I mean, you, you got Casey Fraser and Stroik. We've documented them. Dan Delisle, he didn't see a lot of ice time in that first period, did draw one penalty. Kind of a surprise so far. And uh, Jeff Saleko, here's a young man who played in Columbus in the East Coast League yeah. last year. I talked to their public relations guy, Gary. I can't recall what his last name was, Don, but uh, right before training camp started, he could not speak highly enough of Jeff Saleko, who you see right there following John Casey, not only as a person, but as a goaltender. He had some incredible numbers in Columbus last year, played 54 games, and uh, they tell me he's just one of the greatest kids off the ice, and I've seen that so far, and he is going to be, uh, I think you're going to really like this young man, not only as a player, but uh, away from the playing surface as well. He'll fit that mold of uh, the character guys the Blades have, uh, have had wearing the red, silver, and black. He did something else today. He's a hard worker. He's got a tremendous work ethic, and uh, I was at practice this morning with Doug Sotart and everybody else had left the ice, and Saleko was still out there, uh, skating, drilling himself on backing into the net and making saves, and uh, Doug, of course, is, is an old goaltender from way back, said, you gotta like that. This kid wants to be good, you know, and, and, and Doug's impressed by that. He's caught his eye. And what a thrill for him to get a chance to be a backup to John Casey, who I'm sure he'll learn a whole lot from. Well, all season long, Kentucky Fried Chicken and the Blades will present to you Edge Zone Seats. Every game, that's right, folks, all 41 of them, you can get four $10 tickets for just $28. There is a limited supply, so you need to get them early. That's every Blades home game, including opening night, which, as we mentioned, comes up next Saturday, the 11th, against the Grand Rapids Griffins. You can call right now. Again, there are folks manning the phones at the Blades office. And get your tickets for opening night or any game during the season by calling 842-1063. That's a heck of a deal. Four $10 seats for just $28. The Edge Zone seats brought to you by Kentucky Fried Chicken. There's a look at the Vipers Turner Cup ring. It is a nice looking rig, but I, I, I like that Blades ring, Bob. I'm sorry, uh, but I think that Blades, you don't have yours on tonight, but I like that Blades ring, but that is a good looking ring, and uh, this team was very impressive last year in uh, going all the way to the Turner Cup and, and making hockey history of their own because, to our knowledge, no one's ever done what happened here in Detroit last year. The uh, Detroit Red Wings won the Stanley Cup, and... Uh, the number two league in all of professional hockey, the International Hockey League, the Detroit Vipers won the Turner Cup. So uh, I don't think that's ever happened before. That was pretty impressive. I'll tell you, they've had very competitive teams. Rick Dudley's been at the helm as general manager. He was a coach for the first two years. He gave, a, gave away to Steve Ludzik, who led the Vipers to the championship last year. This is the fourth year of this franchise, and they have been over 100 points in each of the previous three, including 122 a year ago. Of course, it was the Vipers Vipers, who the Blades beat, you'll remember, in that first Vipers season, 1994-95, in the opening round, a big upset, and as the Blades, the first of three big upsets on their way to the Turner Cup Finals in 95. And as we are now underway, period number two has begun, and Detroit, in the midst of their third power play chance, they have come up empty in the previous two, and they've got the puck, and the Blades end to my left, Savaglia sends it in deep, here's a shot broken up out in front, and the puck is swatted away to center ice where Brad Shaw will retrieve. Now Shaw pass for Bachonic back to Shaw far side. Actually Gruden that is. Now Gruden will take the pass from Shaw once again and tee it up and scale it around the boards behind the net. Casey hustling out to knock it down. As the puck now cleared away by Kansas City, Scremmon jammed it free to Sylvester and he'll slam it down the ice with just 15 seconds to go in the Detroit power play. We've played nearly a minute to the second period in a two-line pass now called against the Vipers. That'll halt the action. But Casey is one of the few goaltenders, too, Don, you'll see that uses a straight goal stick. No curve on that stick of his. Now that's the old-fashioned style stick. And, uh, you know, th this uh, two-line pass here, I'm wondering, Bob, if, if by shrinking the... Uh, and you'll see the, the, the pass coming up here. You'll see the, uh, the call. But I'm wondering if... Uh, 
the shrinking in the neutral zone isn't going to cause some problems. Uh, you know, I, I, I wonder if we're going to see more two-line passes as a result of that neutral zone being just a little bit smaller. One thing it's going to do is going to keep teams, uh, give them less room to get set up in the center zone. Well, it certainly won't affect, I think in the, in the, in the end, Don, it probably won't affect it much, although you'll, you'll get more, obviously, two-line passes than you normally would. But you go to a place like Las Vegas where the ice is already short and it's only 185 feet long compared to yeah. 200 feet, which we see at Camp Burn here at the Palace and most professional arenas. And they make up that 15 feet in the neutral zone. So there's seven and a half feet less between the red line and the blue line. That's where you see a lot yeah. of offside pass. You really do. And, and you know, the old American Royal Arena where the old Kansas City Blues played in, which is long gone. Of course, uh, Hale Arena sits on that site now, but that arena was only 185 feet long. So that was a small rink. And we did get a ton of two-line passes because it really was small in the center zone. This is two feet, a little bit smaller, but not uh, not seven and a half or eight feet. You saw that replay we showed you just a moment ago, an example of Casey. We'll talk about it in a moment here. The uh, ability to shoot the puck both ways, left-handed or right-handed, by keeping his goal stick without a curve on it. Now the puck at the right point in the Detroit zone. Sirowick launched it towards the goal, broken up in front. Vipers got it back and jammed it free to center where Sirowick tapped it back in with teammates offside on the play. But, you know, you, you curve your stick and you're really, for the most part, Don, forced to shoot with the curvature. So you, you really can't use the other, the back side of the paddle, so to speak. And, you know, with a straight goal stick, John Casey is very adept at shooting the puck right-handed or left-handed. So it's an advantage for him. Well, he doesn't have to change hands with it to turn or turn his body to try to make a shot to make the shot he can go either way you're right now Fraser forcing the issue in the Detroit zone tying up John Gruden takes him hard to the right wing corner boards Culloden works in taps the puck to Fraser behind the net Fraser a centering pass broken up he got it right back and walks in front taken down and Detroit will come away with a puck and move out three on two they hit the blades line on the right wing Scott Thomas trying to angle in. Good play by Hines to deny him. Now he sends it in front. It's deflected away to the right wing boards, and the blades bust the other way. Here's Purvis in front with a pass to Hines that's tapped aside. And Brad Shaw will take a look and steer it up the boards to center. Jeff Sirowick with it for Kansas City. A pass to Cerrone. It was in a skates. Look out. Vipers working it. Right in front of the shot. Missing the net on that play was Latra. I think this is his first shift of the game. The puck now lifted down the ice by the blades. This will bring about an icing call as Frank Musil goes back to touch. Latra, who comes here as an enforcer for this Viper team, at least that's the role they'll hope he plays, working right in, Don, and just simply missed the net. Yeah, he really did. He got, uh, he got a pretty good break here. Picks up the puck at the blue line. Gets in behind both defensemen then just shoots it wide. Oh, way wide. Oh, I mean, it was 10 feet wide. <laughs> now, Kimball did a good job to come back and time up a bit. Now, Gordy Howe's uh, back on the bench. Uh, there's some indication he may come back out for 48 seconds. Is that right? That's what we're told. When that's going to happen, I don't know. And I asked the significance of the 48 seconds, and that is the number of years it has been since he first played for the Detroit Red Wings, which was in 1946. And then I assume that may be the end for tonight, huh? I don't think he'll be around after the second period. I suppose he'd come back and play in the seventh decade. <laughs> well, he'd be 79. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is impossible. All right. He's in great shape. He's on two pounds below his normal playing weight from when he played. That's amazing. Now the puck is at center ice, 3-1 blades, three minutes into the second period here. Puck is steered into the Kansas City end, Latra with it, just jammed it back in deep to the corner where Cerrone will wheel it around the left side. Contain comes up with it there, now forced off to the side of his goal. He'll just turn and backhand it into the Detroit zone. The blades will go for a line change here. As the play now works the other way, a pass by Detroit goes skipping down the ice. It'll be icing if the blades touch it first, and they did just that. The rookie Delisle, with the Viper draped all over him, able to put the stick on it to stop the play. We're back to Detroit with Kansas City up 3-1 after this. Even though Dodge Ram is the bright red gold standard of pickup trucks, we're always improving things. We've made our available Magnum V8 even more powerful. We've improved the already world-class interior. In all, we've made 130 improvements to the Ram lineup since introduction, including this one, our new flow-through ventilation system. 
New Ram Quad Cab. The rules have changed. How to buy a minivan. Step one. Pick the safest minivan there is. Ford Windstar. Step two. Wait for the inventory closeout sale. That's when your local Ford dealer will want to clear the inventory to make room for the next shipment. Inventory closeout is the time to get the best values on Ford Windstar. Like 1500 cash back on the only minivan to get a perfect five-star safety rating from the government. Step three. Hurry into your local Ford dealer today for the inventory closeout sale. Going on now. Look at David Bruce, the only Kansas City Blade in franchise history to record 40 or more, go more goals in two separate seasons. 45 last year. He's excited. He really is. Those, oh, he's great. He's pumped. He's ready to play. Well, he's out there with the sentiment that helps set up several of those 45 goals. Dale Craigwell, Dean Sylvester moves over to the right side of that line. Now the puck in the Viper zone where... David Bruce up with it, a pass, broken up at the line. Vipers with it, on the move, across the line. Jason Zent with a drop pass, broken up. As the puck goes, carrying in behind the Kansas City goal. Sylvester will sidestep the check, feeds it up the left wing to Bruce, and the Blades are away at center, a pass at a skate. Now Sylvester having to get onside. Bruce waits for him. Sylvester's got the puck to Craigwell, but a good defensive play there by Bachonic stood him up. And Detroit away with the puck and a pass at center. Zent deflects it into the Kansas City zone. It'll be Seroic now to circle behind his net. Thomas all over him. He forced him to give it up. The Vipers trying to feed it in front. And Blades came back nicely to break up the play. And now romping back the other way. Dean Ewan on right wing. Ewan drop pass to Brian Stacy. Carries it in deep now. Feeds it behind the goal. And Savaglia will control for the Vipers. Savaglia hits center ice and fires it in again no icing here they now allow you to shoot the puck from your half the blue line before icing is called look out detroit dangerous in front of shot that missed the net now at the point of drive block rebound lays in front shot and a great save by casey as savagli had him dead to rights and casey looked to get a piece of it now they give it away again vipers right in front of pass and stacy deflects that one away and the puck will finally be gathered in by fraser and the blades move out now Fraser on the right wing to Purvis who weaves in. Drop pass to Fraser. Fraser side of the goal in front. Purvis is shot and that one goes dribbling wide as he was all wrapped up by Shaw and the two of them go crashing into the net. That will knock it free and stop the play. Boy, John Casey just came up with a great save. I tell you, he, he was just awesome in there but the replay you're seeing here is the play out in front. Oh, <laughs> there you see the net came off the pin. The net was open but they couldn't stuff it in that open side and that has to stop play as the net came game loose but uh, boy Casey it's just been a been a solid game what a what an impressive uh, goaltender he was all those years in the NHL and the, he's the consummate veteran he looks very comfortable out there you know the guys that are really good at that position are the guys that make it look easy and he does and that. he makes it look easy he looks very relaxed at all times now blades right in front colored in a shot and that goes deflecting wide into the far corner colored and bouncing on it beats Cerrone behind the net he's got colored in front now Cerrone hanging out of the puck spinning away from the defense Musil feeds it off far side to Hines Hines will slip it right back behind the net colored in centering pass deflected away now they battle deep in the Detroit zone again colored and chopped it behind the net Cerrone in front to contain but Armstrong stepped in front of that pass now now Armstrong taken down hard. Meanwhile, the puck is back at the Blades line. Seroic with it for Kansas City. Now on to contain. The pass got by him. Vipers with it. Here's Armstrong. Left it along the near boards. Vipers heading into the zone. McCleary drop pass. Knocked down. Now McCleary got it back and sidesteps the hit by Seroic. But Craigwell ties him up and seroic has got the puck. Now he puts it around the far side. Vipers are able to keep it in as McCleary battles in the right wing corner. Now in there as well, Hines sons the helmet as McCleary working over Culloden with a stick from behind and Culloden able to fight that off and keep the puck pinned along the boards for a stop in play. What we anticipate it might happen is happening here. The crowd is chanting Gordy, Gordy. They want Howe to come out for one more time and they may get their wish here if uh, this thing goes as scripted, huh? <laughs> Boy, Gordy Howe, what a... But now, you know... You're just amazed at his... You know, the thing that really amazes me about this whole thing, Don, 
again, you say what you want about it, but my question is, why opening night? Why, why wouldn't they do this during the regular season? If you're going to do it, do it during the regular season after opening oh, night. Because the Vipers, of course, are coming off a championship. I mean, well, I they're think, the repeating champs. I think it was to offset the attention that the Red Wings are getting. Uh, you know, with the Stanley coming home with the Stanley Cup, they're going to be uh, their next game. They're playing tonight, and I believe it's Edmonton. Then they're home, and they'll present the Stanley Cup there. And I, I think they did it to call attention to themselves. And what better way to do it than with Gordy Howie was on every television station in this town today? It just seems to me that the, the 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 presenting of the rings and the raising of a banner would stand on its own. Well, I think they wanted. I wanted. I think they wanted to get the attention of the Red Wing fans too. You know, who didn't maybe pay much attention to the Vipers all season long. The Red Wings are on TV here in about another yeah. half an hour or so out in Edmonton. I'm sure that had a lot to do with it. Just get attention to those Detroit Red Wing fans. Hey, you know, we got a team out here. We yeah. want a championship. And what better way to find out than to come out and have them see Gordy Howe? But now you see, if Gordy Howe comes back in the game now, now I now I'm not happy with that. And when he came out at the beginning, he skated on the opening uh, minute, two minutes of the game, took a two-minute shift, no score in the game, but started the game. Now your team's down 3-1. You put him on the ice, even if it's for 48 seconds, that's 48 seconds that you really put a crimp in your offense and your defense. Well, we're going to see him again, at least we're told anyway. We'll also, by the way, hope to be cutting away for a live press conference they're going to be holding at the conclusion of the second period involving Gordy Howe. And unfortunately, because of the media craze here, we're unable to secure him for an interview. But the closest thing will be the press conference if we're able to tap into that, which we anticipate will happen. Now play back underway. Kansas City with a puck as Bruce Hope checking one away. Has it. Gave it now to Craig Wild who feeds it in behind the Detroit net. Piper scooping up the boards at this point and Blades holding it in with a centering pass picked off and it'll be the Vipers now the other way led by Scott Thomas across the line. Thomas taken down hard by Sylvester. Got a pass in deep to Savaglia whose feed in front was broken up. Good play by Craig Wild and Sirowick to tie up the Viper out in front of that net. That was Steve Walker. And Kansas City clearing it away to center where the Vipers slash it back behind the KC goal. John KC with it. Puts it up the far side and the Blades on the move. Sylvester takes a pass on the right wing. Put it in front of the goal where the pass intended for Cerrone is broken up. Look out. Vipers cutting right in front of shot score. Phil Crow will pull Detroit within one as both he and I'm not sure who that was that gave him the pass. We're in behind the Kansas City defense, Don. It Boy, almost amounted did. to a 2 on 0. Oh. Boy, they really did. Let's see if we can take a look and see what happens. Crow gets the goal. But uh, Sylvester gets dumped to the ice, and that's where the play begins. The puck comes loose, and boy, they get in deep behind the defense. And uh, what a nice pass by Trent McClary to Crow for the goal. McClary makes a pass right across the slot. And uh, Crow, who had beaten the defenseman on the right wing, gets the, gets the goal. So it's a 3-2 hockey game. The Vipers have now climbed to within one. Well, Crow, who played uh, some considerable hockey here at Detroit last year with the Vipers, is on loan to them uh, from the Ottawa Senators. In fact, Ottawa sent six players down to Detroit in recent days, Crow being one of them. And it pays dividends as he takes the pass and as Don mentioned, a pretty one from Trent McCleary to make it a 3-2 hockey game in favor of the visitors. All right, tonight got a little momentum going. You've climbed to within one goal of this game. It's now 3-2. You still want to put Gordy Howe in and break the momentum? <laughs> And this is where Dean, what Dean Ewan said will probably come into effect. If Gordy Howe is standing in front of our net in a one-goal game, yeah. he's going to find himself on the seat of his pants. <laughs> now here come the Vipers again. Centering pass knocked away by Stacy, who clears it up the left-wing boards. Down the ice it goes. This will be an icing call. As back to touch it is Frank Muso. We'll pause here. It's a 3-2 Kansas City lead. From the Palace of Auburn Hills, this is Kansas City Blades Hockey on KMBZ and Metro Sports. In hockey, you want the best team, just as you want the best team for your grocery needs. Okay, let's go! At hy V, you save money every day. Great save! hy V meats and produce are so fresh, we never get penalized for checking. Although our bakers get called for icing every day. Every player on the hy V team is friendly and...
and helpful. He's good. That's the high V hat trick. Low prices, freshness, and... Loaded citrus soda with carbo. Speed the rush. Well, former hockey news, minor pro coach of the year in 1993-94, Paul McLean takes over the helm for the Kansas City Blades, joining former teammate and second-year assistant coach for Kansas City, Lucy and Deblois. Takes over, of course, does Paul McLean for Don Jackson, who is now an assistant with the Pittsburgh Penguins under another ex-Blades coach, Don Kevin, Kevin Constantine. That's right. Boy, and here are the Penguins without Mario Lemieux for the first time, huh? But they've got Kevin Constantine. Yes, they do. They'll be anxious to see the kind of job Kevin out. I know he'll do a good job, but I'm anxious to see, uh, you know, how quick he gets things going over there in Pittsburgh. All right here, a 3-2 hockey game in favor of Kansas City. This is the opener for both teams. 11-12 remains in the second period. Now the Vipers, who moments ago got within one, attempting to move the other way, but they're denied at center, and Culloden will fire it back in. Herbis slipped it into the far corner, Culloden after it there, tried to steer it to the point. That's broken up, and out to center the puck goes. As Scremen backing up, a look and a pass on the mark to Purvis. Purvis left it for the defenseman Delisle. Now Delisle, a feed ahead to Fraser across the line. A pass to Purvis got away from him, but Delisle at the point has it in deep for Bruce with a shot, and he sailed that one wide. Now Purvis lets it go, deflected right on by Fraser, and that's uh, squeezed by Herme. And the action halted. The faceoff moves to the left of the Detroit net. Well, that's uh, that's a good save by Herme. This was uh, this was danger had written all over. There's the shot out in front. You see Frazier in the slot got a piece of it as it was in midair with his stick and almost misdirected it past Herme, the goaltender. Ooh. That was borderline high stick. Well, it was. He got it up pretty high. It was almost above the shoulder. You bet. Anytime you knock the puck down with a stick actually above crossbar level, that's where they will whistle it down. Now Craigwell back out with Bruce and Sylvester. The Blades with the puck off the draw. Sylvester on the right wing, a shot. That sailed through traffic in front wide. Now behind the net. Stacy sailed it off the end boards. It comes off to the near side once again. Craigwell wraps up his man. Musil goes in, grabs the puck, feeds defensive partner Bobby J. His pass at the point. Stacy held it in. Shot blocked. Bruce with a rebound. Quick drive right on. Gloved by Herme, and he'll hang on. So the Blades responding here, Don, quite nicely after the Vipers got the goal to get within one. One, the Blades now forcing the issue in the Detroit yeah. end for the yeah. last minute or so. They've taken it right back. You're right. They could have uh, been a little upset at themselves for giving up that goal, but they've come right back, and they've put some heat on uh, Herme, and uh, you got to like the way the Blades have played overall in this game. And, and again, uh, defensively, key people are not here tonight. Uh, Kite, and Steve Jake, and uh, Jason Herter, three defensemen who figure to see a lot of playing time this year, and uh, they have they're out because of injuries. And uh, the Blades have done a pretty decent job out here, and they've gotten some good goaltending by John Casey, who they've had to count on a little bit more because of their injuries on defense. Now well, here's Ewan stepping in across the line with a pass to Purvis to the far point to Hines. He's tied up on the play, and Detroit goes to grab the puck. They work to the line, puck checked away. On the uh, play was Clayton Beddoes, and that will force Detroit offside. Pat Firstwilder, by the way, the other scratch from the Kansas City lineup, he is on the trip. The Blades brought 19 skaters. You can, of course, dress 18. Blades banged up, though, as Don mentioned, before the season even begins with the injuries to Kite, Jakes, and Herter. We watched practice this morning, and... Doug Sotard, and every time somebody gets near somebody, he cringes for fear <laughs> somebody else is going to get hurt. <laughs> a herder will probably be the first of those three to come back. Jakes and Kite are expected both to be out a couple of weeks. Now the Vipers with the puck. Musil, a weak shot from the point, steered aside easily by Casey. Rebound set out in front to the point. 
Hustling to hold it in Bobby J. Seals it right in front, and that's poke checked away. Now Kessler rolls it right to the goal mouth. Off to the near side. Purvis takes his man down. Vipers again with a puck. Kessler centering feed. Broken up by Purvis, but Detroit now putting some pressure on. Now Fraser wrapped up. Can't get free. Ewan scooped the puck up the boards, but not out. And a shot right on from the point by Zent. Steered aside by Casey. And up over the glass and into the seats it goes. The action again halted. John Purvis not only broke up the play, uh, he could have easily been called for elbowing there. He, got, he may have gotten away with one, but uh, he's a veteran right there. Boom. <laughs> got away with a quick left elbow to the chin. Boom. That's, I'll tell you, the, uh, the workout process that some of these players went through, uh, I think, paid some dividends right there. Down there. There are some blades who really bulked up over the summertime, Purvis being one of them, Dean Ewan, Jason Herter. I'll tell you, these guys, I think, uh, at least from what I've seen, look to be in the best shape of their careers, and no doubt in this game, that helps. You bet. They look, for an early season game, for this, obviously the season opener, I mean, you know, a lot of teams still aren't in condition yet, but the Blades don't look like they're too far off the mark. Now Contain trying to steer the puck out of his own end. Detroit continues to apply some pressure. Now a big collision along the near side between McCleary and Scrum. And again, the Blades can't clear it. Turning, here's Crow with a shot blocked in front. Now Crow got it right back. Turns into the corner with a centering pass. Knocked away by Cerrone. He's finally just going to launch it high back into the Detroit end. With under nine minutes remaining in the second period, the Blades right now holding on to a 3-2 lead. Now Scremmon's got the puck along his own line ahead to Cerrone. His feed knocked away by McCleary, and Cerrone's going to get a penalty here to Lane Kaw. Vipers cutting in with a shot that missed the net. Now and behind the goal they go. Blades trying to gain control of it, and they do. And as they do, the minor penalty is coming up against Jason Cerrone, who retaliated and got caught by referee Tim Peel. 3-2 Blades power play for Detroit coming up in just a moment. Campers, now is the time to buy a new RV. During I-35 RV's 97 closeout sale, take advantage of the fantastic savings on all the remaining 97 Coachman motorhomes, fifth wheels, travel trailers, and pop-up campers, plus a sneak peek at the new 98 Coachman models. Coachman, leader of the great outdoors. Get that new RV just in time for football tailgating during I-35 RV's 97 closeout sale. One mile south of Liberty off I-35 at exit 14. Look for the sign of the big Dalmatian dog at I-35 RV. Well, the fourth power play of the game now for the Detroit Vipers, who have failed to score in the first three. But here's a chance done for the home team to get even in this hockey game. They fell behind 3-1 after tying the game. Craigwell got the first goal just two minutes in. Kessa tied it. 54 seconds later, the Blades then scored the last two goals of the first period. And then Crow, not long ago, made it a 3-2 game. Cerrone off for slashing. And the Vipers have the puck and set it up at the point. Shaw with a drive, the save, the rebound. They battle in the goal mouth. And the net came free. The Vipers arguing that the puck went into the goal before it came free. No, it didn't, though. At least it didn't look appear that way from here. A re the replay may tell us differently, but... Uh... I think the referee uh, makes the right call here. There's the shot, and it goes wide of the net right there. Now, let's watch where the puck is, and you see... Uh, well, I think that's what they're arguing. Yeah, they're arguing heroic. heroic intentionally lifted the puck off the uh, net off the pins to get a stoppage in play, and they, they have a pretty good case there, but the puck did not go in before the net came loose. <laughs> A good save again by Casey, Don. That uh, shot from the point, yes, the one-timer by Shaw, deflected right on. Great uh, camera, by the way. It hangs from right underneath the center ice scoreboard, so we get some unique shots. 
Now the play in the Kansas City zone. Behind the net, the Vipers with it to the right point. They feed it to Shaw. Now Shaw, right wing board, Sabaglia, top of the circle he goes. Quick shot right on. We do have a penalty coming up now. Hines is going to go off. He labeled his man in front. And the Vipers are going to have another power play and actually add to the one they're already in. It'll be a minute 31 of a two-man advantage. Well, they're going to call the interference here. Hines uh, upended him out in front. And that will be the call. So now they've got the two-man advantage. You mentioned for 131, the Blades had a similar situation like this in the first period. They couldn't cash in on it. But uh, Sean Hines uh, gets called here for interference. Let me take a look at that. Uh, you can see for this uh, up a high camera here will show you he's going to dump him and upend him right there, which gives... Obviously, uh, the Detroit player, no chance to play the puck, and that's interference. Great opportunity now for the Vipers. The Blades also had a two-man advantage for a minute 16 in the opening period. Failed to connect, although just seconds after it expired, Claudio Scremen got that goal to give KC the two-goal advantage. But now the Vipers with an opportunity here. Gruden's got the puck as plays underway. To Shaw, to Sabaglia, back to Shaw with a drive, and Craigwell deflects that one over the glass. And to the seats it goes with still a minute 16 remaining in Cerrone's penalty. 1.45 to go in the minor to Sean Hines. Take a look at uh, this shot, the blast from the top of the circle, and it's just deflected off Craigwell's stick, and up it goes. John Casey uh, still has his old St. Louis Blues uh, mask <laughs> on. Too. We got he's got white tape over it to cover the. We need to get that painted for him. Well, he's getting one. He's got one on order. It All just right. takes time to get those things done. <laughs> now the Vipers in control, setting up shop on the blades end with a two-man advantage. Gruden feeds it in front of Bagley, and out of Thomas scores. Three-three hockey game, and the Vipers will still have a minute 29 of power play time remaining. Uh, this isn't over yet. Still a minute 29. They score on the two-man advantage here. Boy, and they work the puck around very nicely. This is uh, well executed on the power play. Down low, then across the slot, and you see right there Thomas is all alone. Nobody to cover him when you're a man short like that. You don't have that fourth man out there when you're two men down. Casey doesn't got much of a chance. And unlike the Blades, who I thought took too many passes when they had the two-man advantage, the Vipers went right to work, and this game is tied. And still a minute 29 left of the power play. Well, Scott Thomas knows to where to, that net is. He scored 32 times to lead Cincinnati a year ago. And he gets his first of the year on a pretty pass from Savaglia. And it's tied up, play underway, and again the Vipers remain on the power play now. A one-man advantage for another minute 12. Well, they give the puck away as a pass to the point. Letting that one slide through was Tim Murray, so the Vipers have to regroup, which they do in center. Clayton Beddoes had it stripped away. And Jason Cerrone will slide it back into the Detroit zone. Seven minutes exactly to go in the second period. Under a minute remains in that Kansas City penalty. Now the Vipers in. As they fired around to the far side, right wing corner. Scrimmon run at by McCleary. The Vipers come up with the puck. And behind the goal, they control. Here's Walker off to the near side. Beddoes with a point shot there. That one's steered away by Casey. Now in behind the net. Walker away with the puck. Left it now for Beddoes. Beddoes spinning into the near corner, being worked over by the stick of Seroic. They get it off to the point. Here's a shot from the right side. That one off the stick of Murray. Missed the net rebound shot from a bad angle. And Casey there to make the save. With 16 seconds to go on the penalty, the Blades will rifle the puck down the ice. And the Vipers quickly wind it up. Here's Thomas, who got the game-tying goal. Stripped of the puck from behind by Sylvester, who picked his back pocket. And Kansas City will again lift it all the way down as Hines now stepping back on the ice. And the Blades are at full strength in a 3-3 hockey game with just under six minutes to go. And this is the second period. So the Vipers now showing one of five on the power play. Kansas City one for three. And the puck is back in the Detroit zone. Oh, they got away with a bad pass there. Craigwell unable to hold it in. And now Kansas City will be nailed for offside. Boy, Craigwell been able to come up with that puck. Don, the Blades would have had a pretty good 
opportunity on that uh, Viper net. And boy, hasn't the momentum in this game really shifted. Uh, Detroit uh, suddenly picked up the tempo. The Blades, who had not been making too many mistakes uh, on defense, have had a couple of miscues. And the uh, bottom line is that Detroit has come back to tie this hockey game. Now, by the way, the shots right now, oh, 30 to 13 yeah. in favor of the Viper. I said the momentum has really changed, and uh, they've really opened up a gap in that department. Now with the score tied at 3-3, and 5.35 left to go in the second period. Does, uh, does Gordy Howell come on the ice for his 48 seconds? Mm. And if you're John Ludzik, the coach, do you want to give up this momentum right now? Oh, boy. <laughs> Now the play is back in the KC zone behind the net. Armstrong trying to get away from Craig. Well, does so. Now left the puck in the corner. He hit the referee Peel with it as they jam it up the boards. Again, not out. Vipers really controlling the action at this point. As four players converge along the far corner boards and they'll freeze the puck. The whistle stops the play again with 5.05 left in the second period. Again, don't forget tomorrow night we'll be in Cincinnati to help the Cyclones up and up their new home, the Crown, right in downtown Cincinnati, Ohio. We'll have that one for you, radio only, beginning at the 6.15 for the pregame show on KMBC. Look at all the folks tonight. Look at that attendance, 20,182, which is just about capacity. you got to admit that uh, a lot of the folks that were here earlier uh, left after all the Gordy House ceremony. He, he took his turn on the ice, and they hung around for what went on between the first and second period and uh, a lot of them bailed so it, it, it worked the vipers attract a lot of people that came out here just for that one reason and that's capacity is it not 2182 yep 20,182 is capacity here at the palace they had several crowds last year over 20,000 down there one of the perennial leaders in attendance in the ihl now the puck is Wheeled around the boards again in the Kansas City zone. It does not come out. Here's Thomas right in front. The one timer, a shot deflected away, and it's heroic will scoop it up the near side. Blades just having a dickens of a time clearing their own end of the rink right now. Finally, they'll move it ahead to Culloden, who lifts it into the Detroit zone. And the momentum really changed, and the Blades have just uh, the pace of their play has slowed down. They've looked sluggish, and they've looked a lot of a lot out of sync here since the middle of the second period. Now we're going to get a penalty against the Vipers here, away from the puck, away from the action. Culloden upended, so it'll be an interference call, and the Blades will have their fourth power play. Stay with us, 3-3, the season opener for the Blades and Vipers coming your way from the Palace of Auburn Hills. The same families who work the land are proud to own their own brand, farmland. So when you choose farmland, farmland bacon, sausage, ham, and other fine farmland food products. You know it's good, wholesome food straight from the independent family farmers who produced it. Farmland, proud to be farmer-owned. and the Kansas City Wizards all season long. Major League Soccer. The stuff kicks. Along with Don Fortune, Bob Kayser back here again at the Palace. Where the Blades now go to work with a power play. They're one of three so far in the game. They scored on their first chance and then failed on that two-man advantage, Don, back in the opening period. Yeah, they can look back on that now and uh, know they missed a nice opportunity. But, well, they've been outshot this period, what, 15 to 3? And uh, it has been all Detroit. And Blades just have not uh, had much going for them since about the halfway point of this period. And Detroit again chopping the puck free in their own end back into the Kansas City zone with a minute 30 to go and the interference call to Bradshaw. Now McCleary took the puck away and in center ice left it to Musil who just slides it in deep. Took a funny hop off the corner boards and turning with a shot it was Beddoes that he sailed wide. Boy, Casey had gone behind the net to play it but lo and behold he looked up it wasn't there. Instead it took a crazy hop off the glass and ended up off to the side of the net. 
Now Sterolic moves it ahead, firing it into the Detroit zone. Vipers wheel it up the boards, and out to center it, it goes as Armstrong tapped it away from Sterolic. 54 seconds remain in the Kansas City power play, and they're chanting Gordy again. I think they're going to put him out in a penalty-killing situation, folks. <laughs> I mean, I know he's a, still in great shape for a man 69 years old, but he doesn't skate like the Gordy Howe I remember. Under three minutes remain in the second period. As the Blades trying to get some offense going. Here's Bruce rifling it in. Off to the near side. Sylvester jammed it in to Craig Well behind that, trying to fight off Musil. He does. Tapped it now to Bruce. Bruce's pass misses everybody. Ends up around the near side. Scremen in from the point. Holds it in to Sylvester. Now to Craig Well. He's got Bruce in front pass. Broken up. Now Craig Well got it right back. Nine seconds left in the power play to the point. Scremen a drive. Save. Rebound cleared to the line. Again, not out. Scremen held it in to Stacy with a shot. That's right on net. And the goaltender, Herme, comes up with a save and hangs on with one second to go in the Detroit penalty. Well, the Blades just haven't been able to get much going. Here's the shot by Scremen out in front. You see Herme, he screened too, but uh, Culleton loses his stick. Things just haven't gone too well for the Blades on this power play. And uh, the bottom line is uh, they are right now on a tied up game at 3 3. Now, you know, I, I would guess there are still at least 16, 17,000 oh, yeah. people oh, yeah. placed on, if not more. But some have left. Some came for that very reason. But you're right. This, there's a lot of folks in the stands here still. This is a huge place. And yet, you know, as big as it is, this, the, uh, it has a, a certain intimacy about it uh, in the seating areas. Detroit. Here's Bruce circling the net. Shot saved. They jam away at the rebound, and Herme has got it underneath him. And the net again knocked free as we get some pushing and shoving in the goal mouth. Now, this time, I think Tim Murray may have been responsible. I think he got his arm and pushed that net as he came across the goal mouth behind the goaltender. So they got the stoppage that they wanted. And Tim Murray has not had a very good night here. No. Don is. Uh, We'll take a look at some of the action. Those of you watching the game on Metro Sports, see some of the hitting and scoring opportunities, namely that one of David Bruce. Right now, Ian Fraser on the playing surface, centering JF Contain and John Purvis, while back on the defensive side of things are Dan Delisle and Jeff Sorowick. Got to give Detroit a lot of credit. They battled back in this game, Bob. They really did, but... Uh... On the flip side of that, uh, Paul McLean has to scratch his head and say, what happened to us in the second period? Well, they are showing some signs of life here, Don. The last couple of minutes, they've taken the play away. Well, they did also after the goal by uh, by Crow that uh, made it 3-2. Remember, they came back and they peppered the goal for a couple of shots and put on some pressure, but then it kind of went away. Now the puck right in front. Fraser, a backhand oh. shot and a great glove save by Herme, who seems to be settling down. That puck bouncing around, and Fraser right there took a swipe at it. And ended up oh. laying a pretty good shot right on net. Fraser wants to know how he made that save. He thinks he got robbed. He thought he had himself a goal off the uh, faceoff. Fraser thought he had snuck it in on the backhand side, on a backhand shot on the glove side, but it, somehow he made the grab. Now the Vipers with it. John Gruden circling his goal, puts it up the far side. Blades chip it up into their own bench. And the play stop, 149 to go in this second period of action. Again, during our upcoming intermission, we'll be joining the Gordy Howe Press Conference live. And we'll also have a chance to talk downstairs with John Purvis, who will join us live during the upcoming intermission. Just looking up in the rafters, uh, they got uh, all the NBA numbers, uh, Pistons numbers that they retired. And uh, some pretty big names hanging from the, the rafters here, are there not? Including Chuck Daly. Chuck Daly. Isaiah Thomas. Bob Lanier. Dave Bing. Bob Lanier, that brings a smile to Mike Ficaro's face. He's he's here from the Kansas City Star tonight. He's an old St. Bonaventure guy, and that's where Lanier played. <laughs> now the 
Puck is in the Kansas City zone. A minute 20 remains in the second period. 3-3 our score from the Palace of Auburn Hills. Now KC on the move. Here's a pass deflecting away, and that will force Ian Fraser offside. And I think they're going to call it intentional here, or are they not? We'll see, but uh, all of a sudden things slowing down a bit. Lots of whistles with a minute 11 to go. But you know that we haven't seen as many icing calls, have we? I mean, we we haven't seen nearly as many stoppages of play since they've gone to this new rule. Hey, I want to remind you, there are some good people in the Blades office right now that are manning the phones. If you want to give them a call at this very moment and get your tickets for the home opener next Saturday night, you can do so. The number is 842-1063. And if you call now and order four or more tickets, you'll receive a coupon good for 15% off Blades merchandise. It's next Saturday, a big night at the Kemper as the Blades begin the first of their 41-game home schedule. Now action resuming. Stremen with the puck. And a pass. It goes carrying into the Detroit zone. Shaw puts it up the right wing boards. Lifer is grabbing and moving ahead to center to slip it back to the Blades line. Stacy will steer it in. As Shaw just tees it up. Feeding it at the line where Thomas battles Craigwell and they pin it long enough to draw a whistle here. With 48 seconds to go in the second period of action. Well, I think uh, Morty Howe looks up. There's 48 seconds left on the clock. He wanted to play 48 more seconds to mark the years that he played. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen. Well, if this game stays 3-3 or right. within one goal, Don, uh, one would think that no, it won't happen. Now Stacy for Kansas City, slipping the puck in behind the Detroit net. Vipers move it out. Has the pass broken up. Now they battle along the far side. Detroit up with the puck, dropping it off. Musil will play it. On a feed from Phil Crow. Now Musil standing behind his net. Eyed up by Sylvester. Taken down away from the play. No call. Now the Vipers moving it in. McCleary heading in behind the goal. Whacked at by Scremen. And John Casey will reach in and smother the puck with 16 seconds to go now in the second period. And both teams got away with penalties on that. Well, oh, they did. John. I think uh, the, the best thing can happen to the Blades right now is this period ends. These 16 seconds can't go by fast enough. Let's get it over with, go back to the dressing room and regroup. There's the taped up mask of John Casey. You <laughs> see the old blues mask underneath all that tape. Oh, I never forget. To, you, know, you just recall so many memories of this guy. And of course, you pointed out earlier that fabulous run of the Minnesota North Stars oh. to the Stanley Cup Finals in 1991 when they were finally taken out by Pittsburgh in six games but the, the upsets of Chicago and St. Louis in route to the Stanley Cup Finals well, of course uh, mainly orchestrated by the incredible play between the pipes of John Casey the sad part about all of that was that the North Stars would then leave town shortly thereafter right. to go to Dallas wasn't that a shame now of course the Twin Cities will have a team again look oh. out what a save by John Casey and the Blades are going to get penalized. Heroic again, knocking that net free to alleviate pressure, but he gets nailed and will get the minor penalty for delay here. But what an opportunity oh. for the Vipers. You'll see Kessa set up and look at that save by John Casey. That's Holy a, mackerel. <laughs> that's a marvelous save. And that you, you see it again at the ice level from behind the net. He just oh. flails the <laughs> stick out after it and tips it, uh, deflects it away. And then Soroic uh, comes in and blatantly lifts the puck, uh, the net off its pins. That's the second time he's done that tonight. He got away with it the first time. My goodness.